Hi everybody and welcome to our Galentine's Day party planning live event. I'm Brenda K.B. Anderson. This is my friend Emily Steffen. Hello. And we're so excited to be here with you guys today. We're going to be talking you through um, a, a pattern, a, uh, a whole big combination of crafts compiled together to make beanie pattern. Um, we're going to be talking you through that, but then we're also going to be kind of interjecting some other ideas on how to plan your Galentine's Day party. So um, the thing that we're going to be making today is the Galentine's Day exchange beanie. So that is what this looks like. It is <laughs> a bunch of squares um, that get sewn up and then a ribbed band here. And then the, the cool thing about this hat, the kind of concept behind this, is this is a way for you to invite all your friends to get involved together to do some crafting together. So here we have crocheting and sewing and knitting all in this one hat. <laughs> uh, but, you know, if you want to only focus on one of those crafts, you can totally make this hat with just one of the crafts. You don't have to do all three. So the, the concept behind this was that you would, um, everybody would make a ribbed band that would fit their head and then everybody would bring 10 squares and then they would go to a party hosted somewhere. It could be, you know, a coffee shop or someone's mm -hmm. house, or you could even do this through the mail if you can't actually get together That's a great in person idea, actually. too. That's a great idea. I didn't and even think of And then everybody swaps some of the squares. It would be like, um, you know, your, your Valentine's Day exchange from mm -hmm. the ye olden times when everybody brought <laughs> Valentine's Day and passed them out to each other. And then you end up with your same rib band that you made to fit your own head, mm -hmm. but then you have everybody else's squares. Like, you know, a square from everybody or two, or just depending on how many people you do this with, different amounts of squares from different people compiled together to make your own beanie. And everybody gets a beanie at that. I love so that. that's the fun part too. So And the cool um, thing, if I can just jump in, yeah, the cool please. thing I think about this too is that I, I feel like if I'm thinking about this with my friends, right, we there are so many different crafting abilities. So you can make this as easy or as complicated as you want it to yes. be. And the idea is just to play with the materials and have fun and end up with a cool hat. Yes. That absolutely. Is the it's best beautiful hat in the world. It's very <laughs> <laughs> It's very customizable. Yeah, right. Very customizable. So for skill level and mm -hmm. you know, for what you want to be doing. Um, you know, what craft you want to be working on or whatever. So um, there is a free download with all of the instructions for the beanie and plus at the end, there's a bunch of other tips and suggestions on how to plan your Galentine's Day party. Um, so there's different themes in there and that sort of thing. So that's all in your free download and that's in the description. So just click on the link and then you can get that. You can follow along. You can get it later. If you don't feel like doing it now, it'll be available later too. So mm -hmm. no big deal. Okay, so um, let's, First talk about, we're going to start out by talking about the ribbed band. So there's mm -hmm. three different ribbed bands you can make. It's kind of like a choose your own adventure situation. <laughs> so you are only making the ribbed band for your own head. <clears throat> Unless you have a friend who wants to join you in this Galentine's Day exchange and they really, you know, wanted a knitted band right. and they don't knit or something like that. You can arrange something, you know, there's lots of different ways to, to take care of your friends during this uh, <laughs> party here, right? Share your crafting love. Exactly. <laughs> um, so there's three different kinds of ribbed bands. The one that I have on the hat that I just showed you is a knitted one. There's also a crocheted one and there's also a sewn one. So I'm going to start out talking you through the knitted one. Um, and I also just wanted to mention really quickly too that um, we're going to be going through all the techniques you need to know to make this hat, like the things that are shown in the pattern mm -hmm. download. There's also Emily did a little extra credit, and she's got some awesome things to show us later on with the sewing, some other variations <laughs> that are really fun. I can never so just take a pattern and follow it. This is <laughs> I, know, I love that, though. This is the story this of my life. This is true creative. <laughs> um, so we're going to be sh going through all that kind of stuff, too. Mm -hmm. But if we're going through things a little bit quickly, we're trying to, you know, we're trying to cram in a lot mm -hmm. of useful information into this live event. And um, if there are things that you need a little bit more help with, there are some helpful links that I put in the download mm -hmm. as well that you can refer to. Um, if or you need to go comment. over things. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yes. Yeah. Drop a um, comment. Definitely put a comment in the box. If you have questions about things, you mm -hmm. want us to go over things more. Um, if you just want to say hi or happy pre Galentine's Day to <laughs> Somebody us. Somebody wished us please. blessings and crochet. Oh, awesome. I like it. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm going to start out here talking about the knitted band. So this is the knitted version of the So this is what you'll come to the the Galentine's exchange. Yes. So like with maybe I should explain that a little bit better. So you can choose whether your group of friends, if you want to all make all the pieces and parts at your own mm -hmm. homes right, 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 separately right. ahead of time, and then you meet up for your Galentine's Day right. exchange 
you will be bringing a ribbed band and 10 squares. Okay, because right. that's what you need, and then you'll, you'll end up with a ribbed band it. and interchange yeah, 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 yeah. ribs er, uh, squares from everybody. You could do it that way, or if you would rather, like maybe you get have some friends who are- Get together two times. Exactly, if you want to get together, I mean, who doesn't want to get together two times? <laughs> or even more than two times. Um, Six maybe times. you have some friends who are interested <laughs> in crafting, and this could be a fun thing. Yeah. You could teach them how to make some squares, and then they, you could get together mm -hmm. at a little party and make some squares, and then everyone kind of gets a feel for what they're doing, then they go right. home and complete them, and then the second party on Valentine's <laughs> Day or whenever, um, you guys can get together and then put everything together. Yeah. Okay, so there's lots of different ways to interpret this. The other thing I also wanted to mention, which I, I should have mentioned at the beginning, maybe you're not getting together with a group of friends who craft. Maybe you don't have a bunch of crafts, crafty friends, right? right? Like there's all different kinds of people out there and we love them no matter <laughs> whether they're crafty or not, okay? Um, so this could be something where you make something for yourself and then make another hat for your friend like, also. Like those bestie bracelets that you used to have that are half of a heart. Yes. You can have, matching you can have like ma a little matching, matching themed yes. beanies. Um, or perfect. you could just make it for yourself and mm -hmm. you can be our Galentine. <laughs> Emily and I are happy to be your Galentine. So. 100%. <laughs> All right, so here's the ripped band. It's very stretchy, it's very straightforward. Um, but I am going to walk you through how to do it. So you're gonna cast on 100, 100 stitches to begin. Um, I am using the German twisted cast on because it's nice and stretchy and that's my preferred oh, cast I'm on eager for to a see lot this. of things. Okay. And there I'm is, learning. There is, is a great. link in the, in the download mm -hmm. in case you need to go over this a little bit more thoroughly because <laughs> I'm gonna be going through it a little bit quickly. So I'm starting with a slip knot on my needle and uh, my ball, or the yarn that's connected to the ball is on my right. The yarn that's just the yarn the end is on my left. And you only need for casting on, oh, actually for 100 stitches, you're gonna need more. And is 100 just kind of like a general, like, hey, cast on 100, because that's what most people's head sizes are? So, the, okay, you're, you're gonna have to check your gauge. Thank you for bringing that up, oh, Emily. So okay. you can do a smaller section and make sure that it's gonna end up the right size. Got it, okay. Or if you're like me and you're like, well, the ribbing piece isn't really that well, big. I mean, that's I mean, kind of like the really size stretchy. of a gauge swatch, and yeah. then you'll know exactly what it is. Yeah. If you're okay with that, then you can just go ahead just and keep cast going. on 100. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yep. it's up to you, however yeah. you want to do it. Um, that's the cool thing about this hat, though, is all the pieces are very small. Mm -hmm. So the, you know, you would have to remake a small square. Instead of the whole hat. One, right. Yes. And, yeah. You know, you'll try out the technique, and if that's it's too really big, it's like that's your gauge swatch, so you can use it. Yes, I love your that hat. thought because that also makes it super beginner friendly. Because mm -hmm. when you are, when and if you are making mistakes, it's easy to just quickly, okay, let's start over, and you're not ripping out half a sweater arm. Or right, something. right. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to. Which wanna, we've you probably all do done before. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I hold the yarn, I put it in my hands like this, just the two strands. So I've got one strand that's just the end of the yarn, um, the yarn tail, and then one that's connected to the ball over here. And then I'm going to place my finger and my thumb through the, through um, that little hole opening, basically. Yep. And then I'm going to use my needle to go underneath both the strands yep. here. And then it's going to come up on top. And then that's going to go on the top and down through that opening there. And then I'm going to bring it over here yeah. across the top. And in the hole. And then, yep, down through here and in this little hole right there. Just kind of pull it through, and this then at is that point, German the German cast twisted cast on. Oh yeah, this is a little stretchier than like yeah. long tail cast on or yeah. some of the other cast ons. And then you can let go with your thumb, and then use your thumb to kind of tighten that loop up. I mean, of course, you don't want it too tight, but so let's do that again. So we'll go under two strands mm -hmm. on the top of the strand that's kind of like in between your thumb and your finger, right there. Yep. And then you're going to come over here, go on top of the strand that's going around your finger. And then there's this little hole right here that yeah. you can go through. And if you can't it's get like your needle through that. that hole, you can do this to make that hole yeah. bigger. Yeah. I find that for me, it's harder to do it that way. Yeah. So, but for some people, I know it's easier. So yeah. that's just another little option. I love that. And that's, that makes that edge stretchy as opposed to <clears throat> it gets tight. Yeah, it can get kind of tight with some of, some of our yep. other cast -offs. There's a, I mean, there's like a million cast there out there and so many that I've never even done before. That's awesome. Um, so I, got, I have to learn more about cast-ons, but this is a good go-to for me um, for most things. I, once I started doing this, I was like, okay, this is an easy mm -hmm. enough motion. Once you do it a few times, you know, for a few projects or whatever, then you kind of get it Love cemented it. in your head there. 
So I'm just going to cast on 16 stitches, but you will be casting on 100 stitches for the, for the uh, ribbing. And if you find that the ribbing is, does not turn out the right size, you can cast on fewer stitches if it got too big. So you're going to do that in amounts of four. Or you can cast on more stitches if it's too small. So this ribbing just needs to fit your head. That's much more important than um, you know, getting the exact measurement. Sure, sure. Because everybody's going to be using different yarns. Oh, we should talk about the, the yarns, yes. too. Everybody's going to be using kind of whatever they have, whatever they find. Um, it should be a worsted weight yarn, though, a number four. Although, in this project, I'm actually using a number five, and I'm using a number three, at doubled. Mm -hmm. So I'll talk about a little bit more about that as we go. There is a lot of wiggle room in things, mm -hmm. but you just have to kind of know how to make your substitutions. All right, let me count up here. Two, four, six, eight. One other ten, thing that I just want to mention while you're counting 14, that we 16. did oh. um, ahead of time is we kind of thought, okay, what if we're going to make do this party, if we're going to pull this together with a lot of different people, the one thing that would make the hat very uniform is making sure that our color story is kind of the same. So the website, remind me of the website that you use. Yes. <clears throat> yes. I forget so the called, name of it. It's called Coolers. Coolers. It's Spelled like cool and then yeah. ers. Ers. <laughs> like, yeah, cool. Like colors with an extra. Yeah, with, yeah they were with colors an extra. With an extra o. O. The cool thing about that, and I'm, I just, I, I, this was a new website to me, is that we were able to go on and find, because we, we, we're not, we don't, we're not neighbors, mm -hmm. as cool as that would be. That would be cool. Um, we were just over email, and I jumped on coolers and was like, all right, this is so fun. And you kind of, it's with um, swatches, and they give you RGB numbers, you know, which is like the actual color numbers. And I think mm -hmm. it even has like Pantone color names. So if you're really wanting to match precisely, it has all that. But you can lock certain colors in and kind of flip through other ones, and it kind of matches matches things for you. So for us to make something kind of seamlessly, we just picked a color story mm -hmm. or a color theme or a chunk of colors yeah. ahead of time to say, hey, you're going to make these at home. I'm going to make these at home. But these are the colors we're going to use. And that's an easy, and that way it kind of goes together. Mm -hmm. and you don't have to worry about it. Or guess yeah. and say, I'm getting a sage green, but is that sage green more yellowy sage or is uh -huh. it more tan sage or is it more green sage right. so this was I was like the website is now one of my favorite things it's bookmarked <laughs> awesome. because it's just it's, it's a, very it's, it's yeah. very fun to get color inspiration yeah. from there too mm -hmm. and there are and maybe you already mentioned this but there are like pre-selected yes you can mm -hmm. go through like trending color pattern yeah. yeah. palettes and just you know, if you're like, oh, I don't even know where to start, because some people <laughs> yeah. are just like, I don't know where to start. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. you can just scroll through and be like, ooh, I love these colors yep. together. And then you can, sh you know, send Customize it to your friends it. and mm -hmm. be like, what do you guys think of this? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, so I feel like that, that does help with picking some of the yarns and the fabrics to mm -hmm. say like, hey, this, I have this already. So let's start with a mustard yellow or a teal or a hot pink or something and then right. go from there and kind of put just kind of add so. things in there yes. yeah so that's what we did before this mm -hmm. so that we could you know mm -hmm. coordinate our stuff because we we have not met up since before we no since we decided we were gonna do this project right together so. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right so I, I only have 16 stitches cast on here um you would have 100 and I'm only, I should just mention, I'm just working on these double point needles only because then I don't have these long needles click clacking along on the table here. It's just, that's the only reason. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start out doing two knit stitches. So I'm going to insert my needle here, make yarn over, and pull that through there. One, two, and then I'm going to do two purl stitches. So I bring the yarn to the front and do two purl stitches. This is just a two by two rib. That's all we're doing here. And then two knit stitches. One and two. Ribbing and is so great because you see the progress so easily. Yeah, and it's I always love it when you get about three rows in mm -hmm. and then you can start to see the stretchy the, and yep. you can see what what stitch you're supposed to be doing yep. so, you, so don't you don't have, have to pay think. attention. <laughs> <laughs> then it becomes a, I'm yeah. sitting in front of my favorite TV show or movie and that's easier. Yep. Love it. Okay, so then you will be ending with those two purl stitches. And then you're just going to turn your work. I just designed this um, to work this piece flat just because I thought there might be some newer knitters. But if you, you know, you already know how to work ribbing in the round, you can definitely mm -hmm. just work this piece in the round, no problem, instead of working Is it flat. Is there a preference when you're attaching it? whether flat or in the round. Like when we're making the whole hat, you feel like it's probably easier it, either way. I have, I instructed for people to sew it into a tube first before putting oh, it on Oh, got it, anyways. so it doesn't matter. So yeah. it really okay. does not matter. Got it. Yeah, perfect. 
Okay, so then the next row we're doing the same thing, two knits, two pearls, two knits, two pearls, all the way across. And you're just going to repeat the same pattern, two knits, two pearls, two knits, two pearls, all the way across to the end of your row. And you're going to do that for eight rows. <coughs> you can just barely start to see the ribbing. There's all my knits, mm -hmm. there's my pearls. So on the next row, it'll be a little bit easier to tell what stitches you're supposed to be doing. So if you've been thinking, maybe you're a crocheter and you're like, ooh, I think it'd be kind of fun to learn how to knit. This might be a good place to start with just making some little pieces yeah. for this hat and, yeah. and you could combine them all together. All right, so, um, so I've just worked the second row. You would turn and just keep working back and forth and back and forth until you get your eight rows. And it'll look like this, only it'll be much longer. And then you're gonna bind off. And uh, um, it just says to bind off in pattern. So what that means is you're gonna bind off knit-wise too, and then bind off purl-wise too. So you'll knit the first two stitches. And this is something interesting. So I'm normally, some of you may know, uh, normally I teach crochet. I don't normally teach knitting. <laughs> I've been knitting for a long time and I design in knitting, but it's a different thing for me able to be able to teach it because um, every little thing I'm doing, I'm like, am I really doing this the <laughs> real way? Like I have to just yeah. make sure that I really, you know, it's easy to design it and then write all the instructions down. But then, you know, there's so many different ways yes. to hold the yarn, 100%. to move things. And it doesn't necessarily mean that it's wrong. It's just mm -hmm. different. So yep. I've been learning a lot about all the different ways that things can be done. And I realized as I was doing this, that when I do my bind off, I do it a little differently than most, oh. uh, most of the the videos that I saw about I doing bind off. So I just, so I knit the first stitch and then I knit the second stitch, but before I even pull it off that needle, I come over here with my left hand needle oh. and pull the stitch over. That feels so much more seamless actually. And I, I don't know if this is just maybe easy, easier Like the crochet for brain maybe? Oh, it could be. Maybe Cause you're not English throwing. English style it would, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, if any of you knitters have, have any uh, thoughts about this or if anybody does it this way, this is, this is how I learned how to do it from my mom. And you're, you're moving the stitch in the same place. You are. And it feels like there's less slack. Because sometimes when I bind off, I end up with that weird, I don't even know how to describe it, but slack. Like this is uh -huh. kind of all one motion. Yeah, and you don't have, like you don't have to pull your needle out mm -hmm, two times. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm not, <laughs> however you bind off is how you bind off. And that's you know, totally fine. I feel so. like that is, that is something to preach to the high heavens, that it's, if it works for you, I don't, it's not wrong. I feel like so many times exactly. you look at things and right and wrong with crafting and you're like, no. And I think it's easy to see other people doing it a different way and yes. to feel like, oh, And you feel I'm like, not, oh shoot, I did that wrong. I'm yeah, not yeah, doing yeah. this right. But if it's working for you, then, then I say it's right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. So you're just binding off in pattern. So you're making, you know, when you <coughs> get to your pearl bumps, yep. you make a basically a pearl stitch, but then you're going to, and then you can pull your needle out. This is the way most people do it. And then they take their you needle over. And, and pull that stitch mm -hmm. over the top of this needle. See, that feels awkward to me because I never do it that way. <laughs> um, but that's where I get the extra slack is pulling that stitch over yeah, top. Yeah, and maybe sometimes that's helpful if you want your, maybe yeah. it makes your bind off if looser. You want, yeah, 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 maybe. So that might be something for people to try if they feel like their bind offs are really tight. Maybe try it, do it, yeah. you know, if they do it my way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to make sure that they're doing is, it the other way. Yeah. All right, so let me get these last two bound off here. You've inspired Twyla to do that new cast on. She's never tried it before. Oh, cool. She's excited. Yeah, there is a little link to that, the German uh, twisted cast on. Cool. Um, and it, it, make, it just helps make things really extra yeah. stretchy. You can see it's awesome. stretchy here. So, All right, and that's all there is for the knitted one. Um, so next, do we want to talk about the stitch yeah. version? Emily's going to talk about that. So if you are feeling like, holy moly, that knitting feels really complicated, that's okay because the, the same um, idea is that you would come with a band. It doesn't have to be knitted. This is out of, or knit, knitted. It doesn't have to be knit. This is out of fleece. And so fleece and... Um, Fe uh, not wool felt, but like wool have have a stretchiness to them. You mm -hmm. also could use knitted material, like a knit fabric, mm -hmm. not knitted. There's actually knit one fabric. Here oh, if that's you right. Show this. That's what I mean. Yeah, this is like a little slightly heavier than a, you know, slightly heavier yep. than a t-shirt, but thinner yep. than a polar fleece yes. kind of knit. So, th so the key would be just to choose a fabric that has a stretch to it because um, wool here, like I mean, it has some, but it's pretty 
tight. It doesn't really move too much. Whereas this, you have that stretch to pull around your head because you don't want like a you know loosey goosey kind of hat situation. And fleece is always a good. And mm -hmm. honestly, if you don't even have fleece, constantly I'm walking into like a fabric store and they have the remnant section yeah. always has fleece in it because it's like yeah. a little you know tiny eighth of a yard if that that's like mm -hmm. left over at the end of the bolt. So that that's pretty pretty easy to get. Yep. So the idea here is you're going to cut your length to go around your head with a you know a little stretch in it, so measure. Mm -hmm. There's and a measurement <coughs> in the the download in the download yep. that you can mm -hmm. cut it to. But like Emily is saying, definitely you can fiddle around with that. You yep. can make it a little bigger, a little smaller. But this the measurements that I put in the download should fit most I would adult say. heads. Most people, unless you feel but like it, you have a giant brain, and then it also or you have you know a lot of hair too. That oh, can be another right. thing. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So. The idea brain. here is, you, what's that? Or a giant brain. A giant brain. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, that is, that isn't, that's what I tell my children. You have, you have a big, beautiful brain. <laughs> Please use it. Um, okay, so the thought here is, is I'm just going to go through kind of using both of these. It's a long, skinny rectangle, right? So all you're going to do is connect it right sides together. So like this, a quarter inch of a, of a stitch. And you can use regular thread, but I'm just gonna keep things simple mm -hmm. and use our worsted weight yarn, which is kind of the, the, the tying theme of all the squares to make the crochet work with the knit, work with the sewn pieces, is using a worsted weight mm -hmm. yarn that's double. This was an amazing solution by Jen, because I was like, or by, by Brenda, sorry. Okay. That, um, that we, the, to make it all work together because I'm like, oh, this mm. is an amazing idea, but it, how is this going to work together? It really helps yeah. the, the fabric squares have that little extra stretchiness, mm -hmm. and it, it helps combine the pieces together to make them look like they belong together right. a little bit, too. So a lot of so. the sewing that we're going to do is with a double-stranded worsted weight yarn. Mm -hmm. And I'm using a pointy, super pointy, nice and thick needle. And do you want to just talk like four seconds about the needle situation? Because yes. I okay. struggled a little bit with it. So for the sewing parts, because here's a little tiny preview, because we're going to be <laughs> making these little blanket stitches around here and we're going to be embroidering mostly with the worsted mm -hmm. weight yarn, you could change this up and you could use embroidery um, floss or for, you know, some yeah. embroidered oh, pieces you could. or That's regular thread or whatever. Yeah. But for the outside border, I highly recommend using the worsted weight yarn because I think it'll tie it together so much. It'll make it cushier yep. and it just, even if you're doing all sewn squares, you're not doing any knitted mm -hmm. and crochet, I still feel like having this um, worsted weight yarn on there is just going to help it. And it kind of so delineates <coughs> like a visual of each person's square. I mean, like I, yeah. I seeing it in person, I was like, yes, I really like that because it's, it really is sort of that granny square effect. It's if like a border and it looks yeah. like a little art made. Piece. It like is yeah. kind of saluting all the people mm -hmm. who may, came together with quilting bees and yep. just, you know, coming together in a group of friends, making something together. Mm -hmm. To me, it just feels Okay, as we're talking about needles, I am over here. This is the proof is in the pudding here. I'm struggling with this needle. This is what I was having oh, okay. a struggle with. So this you is can, great. You can go down to one thread or one strand of yarn on the, on the oh, that okay. sewing part. Okay. But for the blankets, which I still recommend doing two. Do you want to try this needle and see if it's I would different? love to. Well, here, let me do this part and then I'll okay. swap you out. So Actually, uh, no. let me talk. Let yeah. me talk about the needles. <laughs> So Guys, this is real life crafting. <laughs> the, the needles, I actually put a link to this in the download because um, the needles are pretty important. You need to find yeah. a needle that has, here, let me pull one out. You need to find a needle that has a large enough eye that you can get the yarn through and it a, a thick enough needle that it basically pokes a large enough hole in your fleece or whatever you're using mm -hmm. so that you can get two strands of that worsted weight yarn through Stars. without it being too tricky. Are you having a hard time getting it through still? <laughs> I am. Maybe I need to go down to one. Or you can go through one layer yep. at a time if that helps too. Ooh. Or I could give you a different yarn. Let me try. Let me try um, one more time. Okay. So here we go. It needs to be sharp on the tip right here. It needs to be sharp here, and then it needs to be have a large enough, um, ha, 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 ha. like a large enough circumference and a large enough eye here so that it can take care of that thicker yarn going through. So I, I actually bought these for this project because most of my tapestry needles like this are blunt ended because I'm a knitter and crocheter and usually we use like a blunt end um, needle here. And I realized none of my needles were either wide enough here for the yarn or 
they were wide enough, but they weren't sharp down here. So anyway, so these worked really well for me. There's a bunch of different sizes in here and you might wanna try out, if you get something like this, you might wanna try out the different sizes to see if that makes a difference um, in getting it through your fabric. The other thing that really makes a huge difference is the fabric that you choose as well. Some polar fleeces, even if you're using polar fleece, some of it is really squeaky and it's a tighter mm -hmm. weave and it's harder to get the needle to go through. Squeaky is a good way to put it because you can actually you hear, can it like hear it go through. Yep. Um, some of it is like a little bit looser, so you can, you know, look for that at the store. Also, this yarn here, or this yarn, this fabric, fabric here, this yep. knitted fabric that I'm using, it was very easy oh for me gosh. to stitch through that. Um, just because of the way that, you know, it's knit, knit up. <laughs> yeah. Is it working? <laughs> Guys, I'm failing miserably. It's working, but I'm like using every ounce of my fingertips right <laughs> Oh, why don't you go down to one I one should maybe go down to one yarn. I think that's what's tripping me making up making it a little tricky there well, well go lordy the lordy lordy for that piece. okay well start over Ta -da. so okay uh, love the needle tips because clearly i'm showing why <laughs> this is so important yes and it really you know it, it d does depend a lot on the fabric oh one thing that i found which was super easy to sew through and really went really well with this project was the felted sweaters so yes one that's thing that what like this is uh that's what this is yes okay I, I love rescuing uh, wool sweaters from the fabric store, or not from the fabric store, from the, the thrift, thrift store. store. And then I felt them in my washing machine at home. This hat actually has oh um, this square right here. This yes. is felted sweater Cute. that I, I felted it in my washing that machine and then I cut it and it cuts through really easily and mm -hmm. it's very, very easy to sew through this. So I dense. highly recommend that. But it is I a little, tr you know, you can't, just know that you're going to be able to go to the store and find the right color that you're looking for. Yeah. It's not <laughs> so there's lots gray. of other options, you know. Okay, here we go. We're in business now. Okay. All right. So, back to the <laughs> sewn ribbed or the sewn um, band. Basically, all I'm going to do here is do a I'm just going to anchor this stitch really quick. I don't love knots because I feel like especially with a hat, you would end up with a bulge and I just don't want to deal with that. So, you can if you want to knot your yarn please 100% do whatever feels comfortable for you. But I'm just gonna anchor my stitch and then I'm just gonna do a running stitch that's about a quarter of an inch away from the edge, which means I'm going to poke through. And this fleece is really flimsy, so. There we and go. You, if you go through one layer at a time, if you mm -hmm. poke through and then poke through the next one, it might be easier if you're having trouble too. Sure, yes, poke through and poke through. Or you can just use your table and. Mm -hmm. Squish, which is what That's I, which is what I'm and doing. They, there are like, um, like a leather thimble would be helpful mm -hmm. too. Like a little grippy yep. kind of thing might be helpful yep. getting it through. Yeah. So I'm and just going poking through and doing a, not very aesthetic right now, but running stitch. That's about a quarter of an inch away from the edge, which means you're going up and down and up and down and up and down, just to sew this into a circle. And this is just to get it sewn into a circle. There doesn't, there's no visual impact of this stitch right here. Yep, and you can certainly do this part with a needle and thread if you know that makes yeah. things easier. We 100%. just wanted to test it with the yarn to see if you had to buy another supply. You know, if you didn't already have thread and you were just, you knew you had to buy the yarn. We just wanted to test it out to see if we could sew it together. So I will so. need to go to a double stranded though to do it together. Mm -hmm. Yes, so I'm gonna just anchor this here so that this is just in a tube. and just give it a trim and you can before you cut that actually you can just go ahead and pull this end a little longer like that oh. to make it double strand so you don't have to you don't have to you are so <laughs> smart okay i love crafting with other See, this people is this is good this is so good people. so this is what it will look like right here you have a tube and my wrong side is out right now my right side is in so i want my if you, i'm just going to put this here to compare my right side to be out because we're working not Right. We're not flipping this, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So all I'm going to do is put my right sides, wrong sides together yeah. and match up my edges as best as possible. And you'll kind of be able to match it up a little bit more as you're going, but match up your edges here and then simply do a blanket stitch around this top edge to kind of finish it off. I love blanket stitches for multiple reasons. A, in this situation, we're gonna be able to pick up those blanket stitches to use everything to stitch together, but also blanket stitches for fabrics that I feel like 
aren't getting tucked under and sewn mm -hmm. in a more traditional way. It's such a cool finishing edge, whether it's with a needle and thread or a needle and yarn or something like blanket mm -hmm. stitches are one of my favorite stitches in the whole land. Yeah. So for me to do a blanket stitch and just like Brenda said, there's probably a million different ways that you can find and nuances on how to do this. But what I like to do is I always like to start um, on the, the bottom of my, of my fabric. So I'm holding it like this, this is the bottom. Some people like to start on the top. I just personally like to start on the bottom. So I go up, and this knot is a little tricky, but I'm gonna go up and go around once. Through the similar-ish hole. Let's just say that. It doesn't have to be the same. But you're going to go around once. And then I'm going to insert my needle into this whip stitch, if you will, that we just did around the edge. And what that's going to do is give us kind of a base. So my yarn is coming out of this side of the stitch. So now we can start the blanket repetition. So how that works, again, I like to start on the bottom working up. So I go up. And we're, I would say, probably quarter inch from the edge. Wouldn't you say that's probably yeah. about? Mm -hmm. I think it just depends on your fabric, but quarter inch is good, yeah. I think. It looks nice. So you're going to come up, and before you pull your stitch all the way, your needle is going to go back through this hole. And what that does is it's carrying the yarn across and making a little tiny stitch on the edge. So just repeat that. And you kind of have to, I found, kind of just like work and tug a little bit while supporting the fabric with your fingers. Mm -hmm. So again, up, about a quarter of an inch-ish from the edge, and then come back in that hole, pull a little tight, come up, needle through the hole, and you'll start to see this edging across the top And um, I would say the consistency, I would say this with blanket stitches, is how hard you pull your yarn, or how well your, your blanket stitches look is how hard you pull your yarn or your, or your thread or whatever, because you don't want to like <clears throat> yank it to high heavens, because then it will have like weird tension on it. And then you won't have enough stretch either. Yes, too, another that's thing. a Just super good like point. Yeah, because like you want it to, yeah, you want it to be mm -hmm. this like stretchy situation around the edge. And then also the consistency on how far apart your stitches are. So just kind of keep that in mind. Obviously, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's a no. hat. This is not like anything that's... And it's supposed yeah. to look patchworked and right. handmade and a little variation. I mean, like, we're not machines. We don't want this yeah. to look like it was made by a machine. We want machines. it to look like it was made by a group of friends or <laughs> a person, you know? Right. <clears throat> so I'm just going to continue this blanket stitch around the edge. But the one thing that we were kind of talking about before this is you're obviously not going to probably start with 300 miles of yarn <laughs> to be able to go around the whole yeah. entire outside. Because blanket stitches kind of use a shocking amount of, of thread or yarn because you're kind of stitching and doing the side thing at the mm -hmm. same time. So when you get to the end and you want to change out your yarn, maybe I'll just do a couple more and then I can just change out my yarn. And one thing too, I don't know, maybe I should have said this, is to keep our stretch. I want to kind of, I don't know, kind of tug a little bit on this and make sure it's laying mm -hmm. flat and working as you go. And you'll notice that as you're putting your stitches together, these ends become less curly, whirly than yeah. these ones. And they kind of start laying flat, which mm -hmm. is the cool thing about a blanket stitch. So, okay. So let's just pretend, because I just want to show you this, because... Again, um, I feel like knots are tricky with a hat. So I want to show you how, like, let's just pretend I'm at the very end of my, um, my, my yarn here and I need to add a new piece. So what we were kind of talking about, and this is going to be my first time trying it because Brenda was walking <laughs> me through it, so yay, um, is I'm going to weave, uh, so here, let me explain it. I'm going to weave my yarn and go back and forth and then start a new one picking up where I was and go forth and back. Forth yep, and back exactly and forth. Like the up, forth up and back and forth. Yeah. Right? Does that make sense? Did I say that right? <laughs> I think it'll make sense when okay. you show everybody. <laughs> so I'm gonna, so I'm gonna go through here and kind of go between the um, I'm just gonna call them the vertical blankety parts. Like these vertical, to me they're vertical right here. I'm gonna go between those. My my, my uh, needle is inserting in here and I'm gonna kinda go between if I can. You kind of have to feel it. Yeah, you gotta kind of wiggle your needle in there. Yeah, but you, even if you want it, like this one, you can still see. I went yeah. on the 
just under the yarn. Oh, you just went under the yarn? Yeah. So oh. you can do that too. Like if you want to be okay. extra, extra super seamless, you can go between the two layers of the fabric. But if you just want to have it a yeah. little bit more okay, simple, that makes you can sense. just go under the yarn. And All right. It's I love fine. that. Okay, let's do that. So I just went under the vertically little part of the yarn, but here's what one thing I'm noticing. I don't want to pull too tight to make it look like that stitch is being yanked. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go back through just a couple little vertically blanket parts right here. Okay, so it's three, right? And then now I'm going to go forward again. Just kind and just of make sure when you're going forward, you take a, you skip the last one you went under, so that way when you pull on it, it doesn't just pull your loop right yeah, back so, out. Yeah, so, so that's a good point. You gotta kind of wind it around yeah. that little. I thought you did that, but. Yeah, so yeah, <laughs> so I inserted kind of halfway in between, or the, between the double. Oh, okay, yeah. Does that make sense? Did I say that right? Because it's double-stranded, yeah. Sometimes I feel like I don't explain what I'm doing properly. Okay. That's why we have video. I know, <laughs> yes. So you can okay. see. So I'm just gonna tuck this end in. I don't know if this is what you did, but I'm just gonna tuck this yep. end in between the fabric. Now, here's the thing. If you feel like this is too difficult and you want to make a knot, by all means, just make a knot because it's, it's going to okay. be fine in there. It's going to be fine. It's going to be perfectly it's, fine. Yeah, we all, I think sometimes we think we have to anchor these stitches to like make sure that like the earthquakes and hurricanes can't rip them apart. And in reality, like they're pretty anchored. Okay, so now I'll cut a new piece of yarn. <laughs> all right, and then put my two ends through my really giant eye of the needle. And now, again, if you want to make a knot, make a knot, it's fine. But now I'm going to start over here. So past, you can kind of see that bulk. I like that you can see that, because now it is a better demonstration. Go past this little area, and I'm going to go forward, backward, forward. Is that what you did, or did you go backward, forward? I started in the opposite direction that I ended in. Oh, so I would go backward, forward. Yeah, I mean, I don't know which. I, I ended up forward. I ended up this way. <laughs> I'm gonna okay. Go, I'm going to go towards so Emily go and then towards and Brenda. Yeah. And then you back. just want to end up with your second pass is going to bring you back to the beginning. Right to the, yeah. to the place where you had ended your last blanket stitch. Yeah. You kind of have to just be a little gentle with it because I don't want to like rip out all these little stitches. But if this is proving that what I just anchored is great. Did you see how much I retched on that? Yeah. Like, it's fine. It is fine, people. <laughs> not gonna go anywhere. No, and look, when I'm looking on this side, which I would say is my right side, maybe the side that will be out, you can't even tell. That's the best part. Okay, let's go this way. And I'm sure you're picking up on what I'm doing now. You just go backwards and forward. And then we're gonna start our blanket pattern kind of all over again by doing that first whip stitch. Just work this. There we go. Um, doing that first whip stitch, which was, if you remember, you're going to go, I like going up. If you like starting from the top down, that's totally fine. I, I like starting from the bottom up. That's just how I prefer to do a blanket stitch. <clears throat> so first the whip stitch, because this sets you up for that blanket pattern. So go around the outside. Pull it up, insert your needle coming towards you so that your yarn is on the opposite side of the stitch you just did. And then blank it away. So up, <laughs> put it through the loop, and you'll just continue around till that band is done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. That's simple. Yep. Ta da! And when All you look right. at it, it looks pretty seamless. All right. Yeah. So let's let's talk <coughs> a little bit about the crocheted version of the ribbing here. So um, to start out the crochet version, we just draw a little loop. We're going to fold that loop over onto the strand connected to the ball, and we're going to place our hook underneath. And in the pattern, I specify what hook I'm using. I'm actually using a G hook here, which is a four millimeter hook. Oh, and I can't remember if I mentioned the knitting needles were also four millimeter uh, as well. I can't remember if I mentioned that, but that's all in your download, so you don't have to, you don't have to remember that. Um, and then we're going to chain eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now we're gonna skip the very first chain next to the hook, 
and then we're going to work across the remaining seven, but we're going to work into the bottom of the chain. So right now there's a bunch of little V's going in this direction. We're going to roll that over here, and then we're going to work a single crochet underneath, uh, sorry, a uh, half double crochet underneath that first horizontal dash there. So we're going to yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through three. And we'll do that again. Yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull up, yarn over, pull through three. So we've got two half double crochets. And we're just going to continue making those half double crochets all the way across. Um, maybe while I'm doing this, Emily, if you're able yeah. to check and see <coughs> if anybody has any questions or anything like that for us. Ooh, just want to check in. This is, okay, this is a good question. <clears throat> would some, excuse me, would some kind of all to pre-punch the hole in the fleece help? That's a question. I would say it could, but I was probably just using the wrong needle. I think... I mean, it could help, but an awl probably, it, unless your awl is sharper than your needle. Yeah, that's then true. Then I don't think it's going to mm -hmm. make too much of a difference. I think it depends a lot more on the fabric. And maybe we can do a little blank <coughs> stitch on that to show oh how my much gosh, easier yes. that yes, is. Yes, 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 yes. The Let me other do that quick. fabric, the knitted fabric there. I think, and even just uh, amongst the, the fleeces, there's going to be some mm -hmm. that are much easier than Like this than is kind of thick fleece. Yeah, maybe it's, it's not got a tighter, it's got a kind of tighter mm -hmm. weave to it. It's, it's a more expensive fleece. Yeah. <laughs> than some of the other, but maybe the less expensive fleeces um, are a little bit easier to go through. Okay, so I've reached the end of my row and now I'm going to chain two, one and two. And I usually chain those fairly tightly when I'm doing half double crochet just because I find my half double crochet stitches um, aren't quite tall enough to match up with a longer chain two here. Mm -hmm. um, that's just like a personal preference thing. You can also just chain one there if that's what you're used to doing. Then we're going to turn our work and we're going to work into the back of the V here. So we're going to be, this is called working into the back of the stitch. Um, so instead of working under the both strands, how we normally do, we're just going to work under the back. So if you take a look here, we're skipping these two little Vs. Those were the chains we just made. We're going to make a yarn over and we're going to insert our hook underneath just that back loop there. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through three. Okay, and then we're going to continue that. Yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through three. Just going to continue making those half double crochets all the way across. Like this. To the end. And then we will chain two, one and two. And then we'll turn our work and continue doing the same stitch. So yarn over, insert through that back loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through three. So this is just a half double crochet through the back loop only um, ribbing. And we're, mm -hmm. we're creating our ribbing sideways, as you <coughs> probably noticed. Um, so this is a different direction than how we created our knitted ribbing. The knitted ribbing we cast on all. Well, the knitted ribbing we cast on all of our stitches, oh, and we work back and forth. And, yeah. And in order to get the ribbing to be yeah bumpy. stretchy yeah. and bumps the mm -hmm. right way, yeah. we we are just working very short little rows here. That's really in cool. order to create this ribbing here. So and that's it. So all you need to do is just keep going back and forth. I think there's <coughs> um, 58 rows that we need to work up here. You can see this is what my ribbing looks like. It looks extremely similar to this. This is actually a different yarn, but it looks very, very similar. Um, and then once you do your last row, your last pass across of those half double crochets through the back loop only, then you will just chain one and you're going to turn your work just like you're going to work another row. <coughs> but then you're going to take the foundation chain, which is right here, right by your beginning tail, and you're going to place that right on top of your last row that you worked. Now you're going to work a slip stitch through just the back loop of each layer here. So we're going to put our hook here in the back, back loop of that stitch from that front layer, and then the back loop of the um, stitch from the layer behind. Mm. Then we yarn over pull through both those loops and through the loop on the hook, and that makes our slip stitch. So we're going to do that again, back loop, back loop, yarn over, pull through, and pull through. So we're just going to continue making these slip stitches. This is instead of seaming it. You could, of course, if you'd rather seam it, you can absolutely do that instead. Um, but working it through the back loops like this, this allows 
um, the front loops to be free and for it to kind of blend in a little <coughs> bit more with the <coughs> stitch pattern, which you'll see in just a second. I'm going to do my last slip stitch here. And now you can see when we open it up, it has those same kind of little bumps and grooves. It, like, it looks like it blends in pretty well there. So, um, And then at that point, you can just go ahead and fasten off. Oh, it looks like there's a little knot in my yarn there, but that's okay because we made it. <laughs> um, you don't need to leave a long length of yarn here unless you're planning on using that color to sew all of your pieces together later when you mm -hmm. assemble your beanie, which you could. You could leave a long length there that you'd already have it attached to this piece, and then you'd be able to just use that for seaming. So I'm just going to pull that right through like that to fasten off. And then I would just weave in my ends if I wasn't using those for seaming, just to get them all done. I like to weave in my ends as I go on things because otherwise it's just like overwhelming <laughs> at the end. And I'm like, oh, do my Actually, that, is, ends that leads into this question from Kiona, who's saying, when we do the squares, do you, could you join as you go? And it got me thinking for crochet, mm. she's asking specifically. Oh, okay. If you're doing this in person in multiple sessions with your friends, it could be that you're like, hey, everybody pass your square to the right and you're weaving yeah. it in as you're kind of making your own hat. Uh -huh. That is an option. I mean, because you're leaving your ends available to be woven in. Right. But you're not, you're not weaving in each individual because you're putting your blanket stitch on the edge. I guess maybe I'm not saying that properly, but you know what I mean. Yeah. So... Um, and I think she's talking about joining as you go as a technique that you can use in knitting and crocheting where you are, mm -hmm. when you're crocheting modular things and then you put them, you know, wrong sides together or right sides together or however you do it. And, you and then you're stitches. stitching through um, the other piece as you go. So that way you, there's no sewing later. Yep. Um, you could do that. I guess it just depends on how you make the squares, first of all. If you are only making the granny squares, it would be really easy to do mm -hmm. that because it's stitched all the way around. Um, the other squares, you would have to do some sort of, I mean, you just have to figure that out, like how you're gonna join them as you go because they're all made differently. Um, but if you're only using the granny square, that would work. If you're doing the single crochet stitch back and forth, you could make it your square a little bit smaller and then go all the oh, way around sure. once. And then you could use that for yep. joining as you go yep. kind of situation. Um, the other thing though is if you are doing this, if you're just making this hat for yourself, then that's yeah, great. You can 100%. absolutely join yep. as you go. But if you are planning on using this as the Galantine exchange sort of thing and you're getting scores from other people, then it's, it might be a little trickier. You know, you just mm -hmm. have to make sure everybody's got the same sort of squares that you could join. Um, but also the other thing that I really, the other drawback to joining as you go, this is the reason I love the idea of joining as you go because I love like when you're done, you're done. I feel like <laughs> yeah. that's awesome. Here's nothing else to do. But I also like rearranging things in an aesthetic oh, way. So the problem yeah. with joining as you go is you don't, if you're doing a collection of a bunch of different colors, you can't mix and match as you easy. You can't just yeah, look at all that's your a options. Super good point. And you don't know what's coming next. So you don't know, you know, like yeah. maybe you joined as you go and then later you're like, oh, I really we wish I put the square together over there. or something. Yep, yep, yeah. yeah. So, that would be my, you know, word of caution. Yeah, <laughs> word of caution. Just depends on how you're using this project or how you're using the pattern to be. Yeah, how project, you so. how you plan to lay out your Valentine's Day, basically. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So um, we've talked about all the ribbings. So you're going to make a ribbing that fits your own head. Mm -hmm. You're going to bring it to the party, or maybe you're just making this hat for yourself, which is totally fine. Um, you have a ribbing that fits your head. So then let's move along and talk about the square. So um, let's talk about we'll talk about this intarsia square first. Mm, I love that one. This little guy. Let me bring over my little collection of things. <laughs> <laughs> this is. Um, a knitted square, and what I did was I used the intarsia version of knitting, which means that you have a separate ball of color for each block of color that you're working on. So for example, when you're, when you're making this heart, you can go back and forth in just the one color, you get to here, then you switch to the pink, and then because you've already moved with the pink, you, you start another ball of this gold over here. So you really have three balls going at once. So one here, one here, and one on this side of the heart. So the thing about intarsia, though, is that for little sections, it might just be easier not to have a whole nother ball because yeah. like up here, when we get to this part in the heart, it seems so kind of silly to have a ball of yarn here, a ball of yarn for that one stitch, and then later for those three, and then a ball of yarn here. So what I did, let me show you. I did intarsia for the bottom of the heart, and then once I got up to the very top of the heart, I stranded my colors. So I'm going to be talking, I'm going to be showing you guys what that means. Um, there are also notes in the pattern download telling you what, what rows I did the intarsia process, 
and then where I switched to the stranded. Um, and then there's also some links for you guys. And in the how is Intarsia different help. than just doing basic so. color work? So color work could mean a whole bunch of different oh, things. Oh, so it's like a broader term. Yeah, it's okay. kind of like okay. you're using more than one color at yeah. once. Yeah. But they're stranded, which is what I'm using at the top. That means you're like carrying. Yeah. You're carrying yeah. your yarn as you go across. Yep. But in Tarja, you you just hook your yarn. You, you, you twist your yarns around each other. Mm -hmm. And then you switch to the next color. And then you twist your yarns around each other. And like a different color. ball of yarn. Yeah. So you're yep. not ever carrying your yarn yeah, all the way Because otherwise you you'd be carrying your, per your pink across. So you'd yeah. be carrying, like if you, str oh. you could strand this where you'd yeah. be carrying this yep. color across yep. the pink yep. um, and back and oh, forth. Or that's what I mean. Yeah, you'd be but carrying the, the mustard across the But the, the reason pink. you don't want to strand something this wide is because you can, it's going to have a very long yeah. strand there. Yep. And you'd, you'd hook You it. can do things where you twist your yarns around each other sure. halfway point. So, th I mean, there are lots and lots of different ways to get I am so these eager to see, color. See, to see you so. do this. <laughs> this is really awesome. <laughs> the, yeah. So, um, let's see. Let me get started here. So I've already done my cast on. I did the same kind of cast on as before, the German twisted cast on here. This time I have 17 stitches on my needle. And I am going to start working, working across in seed stitch. Okay, so that would be, we're going to start with a knit stitch. We're going to do a knit stitch first, and then a purl stitch. And then we're going to repeat that all the way across. So knit purl, knit, purl. And I added this little <coughs> seed stitch border around the square. It, it helps to keep it from curling, but which isn't really a problem because, you know, even if it was kind of curly, you could block it and then sew mm -hmm. it into the hat and it wouldn't mm -hmm. be a problem. But it, it just seemed to make things a little easier, but I also just thought it was cute. It just looks Sometimes like that it, extra dimension is really fun on something like this. It's just a like cute this. little yeah. bumpy, f I feel like it's a little frame around your Valentine. You know, I kept thinking Aww. when I was making these, um, designing the pieces that I worked on, um, like, oh, what would what would be a cute looking a cute looking Valentine? Yeah. Square. <laughs> all right, so I worked all the way across. I ended with a knit stitch because we have an odd number of stitches. Started with a knit, ended with a knit. Mm -hmm. Then I am going to turn my work. And here I have a purl stitch because that's what's on the back of a knit stitch. And on the next row, I'm going to again be starting with a knit stitch because when you're working in seed stitch, you do the opposite of what you have below. So here's you, you have a purl stitch here, so you're going to work a knit stitch into it. So knit, purl, it's exactly the same row that we already did. Okay, so that's easy to remember. Knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, and then ending with that knit at the end. So I'm going to work my way across, and then we have one more row to do in the seed stitch. And then we'll start on following our little color work chart. All right. Emily, do we have any more questions or anything no. like that? No. It sounds okay. like everybody's just observing and okay. excited to do this. <laughs> Yay! I'm curious, um, for the people out there who are thinking about making this project, if you guys are thinking about making, dabbling in all the crafts, mm -hmm. or if you're doing, you know, just crochet or just knitting or just sewing. Yeah. And if you've, you know, if you're going to have some crafty friends join in. I feel like there's so many ways to take this whole idea of a party because you could also just have your friends come and have an instructional light where you supply, you know, run to the store and just get all the same yarns and have, yeah. you know, a big table Yeah, you could stuff. totally go shopping together, yeah. too. I mean, that could be fun. <coughs> <laughs> Let's just make this a seven-night event. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? A marathon of crafting with your friends. Nobody would be mad about that. As long as you have <laughs> snacks, I'm in. <laughs> Why not? All right, so here I am doing the third row. It's, this is the third knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, ending in a knit. Um, okay, so I've done my three rows of seed stitch, and then I'm going to turn my work. And then the way that I think about the rest of this piece, so you've got your little seed stitch section here, and there's this little square in the middle. This is what the chart is for on the inside mm. of your, let me just pull this out yep. so I can show you guys. Here's the chart. Um, this is the chart that I'm going to be following. Let me put this over here, maybe. I love those charts because it feels so like, okay, row one, we're done. Row yes, two, we're it's done. you can cross it off mm -hmm. or cover. What I like to do is I like to have a, a piece of paper, like and a full sheet of paper, yep. and I cover where I haven't gone yet because oh, it's, it's nice like to see where you've been. Yeah, compare. And you can, then you can yeah. connect your stitches, but as you move up, 
I mean, obviously you wouldn't need it for here. You well, just well. know. <laughs> I mean, maybe. but like when you get up to here, yeah. it might be helpful to just see that and yeah. Um, that's how I normally like to do my charts. And at first I was like, I can keep track of where I'm at. I don't <laughs> need a piece of paper. So I'm not going to bother with that, yeah, 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 yeah. getting a piece of paper I've always done the opposite where you put like a post-it and then I get confused. I like this way. The post-it's yeah. where what you put the post-it above it, it's perfect. Yes. Then you, you don't need to see where you're going yet. But I like the comparison you, thing because sometimes I get overwhelmed mm -hmm. with like, ah, is that the wrong? And then you're counting 37 at. times to make sure yeah. that you have two stitches <laughs> where you're supposed to have two stitches. And Right. Yeah. Okay, so before you get to the chart, you're get still going to be working three stitches in seed stitch over here. So there's three stitches here and there's three stitches here that are not on the chart. Oh, sure, The sure. chart is only showing you what's happening in here with the color work and the directions will tell you that. It'll say, you know, knit, purl, knit, and then work your 11 stitches across the chart is how, you know, basically how it's put in the, in the pattern. So we're going to start with our knit, purl, knit. So we do a knit and then a purl and then a knit. And then um, at this point, we're going to be working across our chart. So our whole first row is just knitting all the way across. It's just the same main color, so we don't have to actually change color yet. Um, and I just added that in there because it seemed to make it easier to mm -hmm. get your frame of reference going. Obviously, you don't need the chart to tell you just knit all the way across in your main <laughs> color, but, <laughs> but it helps me to see the whole picture and to be able to know when to start it later. All right, so I've knit all the way across and then we're gonna end with that knit, purl, knit for our seed stitch border. Knit, purl, knit. Okay, and then we're gonna turn our work. And then the next row is the same, except we're gonna purl in the middle. So we're gonna start with a knit, purl, knit, just like we, uh, we will always do that along that border. It's always gonna start out with a knit knit, purl, knit, and now we're at row number two. So we're working this way across row number two, and we are gonna be working purl stitches here because every time um, you're working on the wrong side of this color work section, you're gonna be working purl stitches. Purls on the wrong side, knits on the right side. All right, a couple more stitches here, and then we're at our border. There's our last pearl. It's very now we're going to do knit, knit. <laughs> pearl, <laughs> knit. You like to knit, Emily. I do, but it's really I great watching somebody do it. Yeah, you're, like, wow, you're seeing it come alive in it? front of your eyes. Yeah. I, uh, when I grew up, my mom, she would knit a lot, and I just remember hearing she used metal needles when oh, she knit. Oh, the clickety clack yeah, of the metal I needles. I love that sound. Mm -hmm. I. It's just like add in a crackling fire, and yeah. like you're golden. Yeah, it's <laughs> wonderful. Um, okay, so now we're on row number three. This is where it starts to get exciting. Okay, so we're going to do five stitches in that center section. First, we start with our seed stitch border. So we do knit, purl, knit. And now we're going to do five stitches in just regular knitting. One, two, three, four, five. And now we're gonna switch to our second color. So let me just bring in this pink here. This is a great pink. So it's variegated almost. Yeah. With the gold. That's in it. a thrifted sweater that I took apart. Oh right my there. gosh, no way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did a little um, blog post about that on the Creative Crochet Corner. I love that idea. We've all ripped out our own stuff. Yeah. I mean, before, why not rip but out why someone not? else's. I mean, or uh, the, oh, that was a gap sweater. Yeah, that's <laughs> so cute. Okay, so <laughs> I don't know why I remember that. Okay, so to start, I just leave my yarn hanging on the front. Mm -hmm. There's lots of different ways to do this, but this for some reason helps me, I think, because I can put my thumb on it. So I'm going to be making the next stitch in this pink color. So I just leave it hanging on the front, going between my two needles, and I'm making a knit stitch right here with that new color. Okay, and you might think, oh, okay, and then you just switch back to this color. But we're not going to do that, even though it'd be really easy to do at this point. We're not going to do that because we're going to need that extra ball of yarn for the second half. So I am going to switch and add a third, this third ball here. And I'm going to add it in the same way. I'm just going to leave it hanging on the front, place it between my two needles there. Oh, this makes so much sense. Just leave it hanging out. And then I'm just going to knit that stitch with the new yarn. Okay, yeah. and then I'm going to knit across. 
And it might feel, it will feel, especially if you've never done this before, it will feel like, oh my gosh, this is not going to, this it'll is not feel, stable. It's yeah. weird. Mm -hmm. Nothing's attached. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it always feels. That's yep. just how it is when you first start this out. But later it'll be fine, I promise. Okay, so we're going to turn our work and then we're going to work the next row. So this is a pearl row. So the idea oh, is you're start with like here. <laughs> columns of colors. Because then you're yeah, not basically. carrying your yarn. Yep, you're just trading off. I have basically. never even seen this before and this is so great. Good. Okay, so we're going to start with a knit, knit, and then a pearl, and then a knit. That's our same just seed stitch border we've been doing this whole time. Now we're at the purling section here, so we're going to go ahead and purl. We have a total of four mm -hmm. stitches in the main color, and then we're going to switch. So one, two, three, four, and now we're going to switch to the main color. And here's the thing about intarsia. You have to be wrapping the yarns around each other, or you're going to make holes between mm -hmm. your stitches because you have to connect those colors together. So we're going to take this. This is the yarn we just ended with. We're going to lay it right across our needle. So think about it as being on the wrong side of your work, whichever side, whether that's facing you or you not, go it's going to be on the wrong side of your yeah. work and it's going to be running right along your needle. And then you're going to take the next color that you're switching to and that's going to, you're going to bring it up and see how it crosses yeah. over that. That's going to yep. link them together. So then you go ahead and make a purl stitch here. Because you're doing all pearl because it's the back yep. side of the work. And we're going to do two more purl stitches because that's in our color. And this will look loopy and horrible. Like it looks <laughs> terrible right now. It Don't probably worry. looks loopy it's until going the next to row, fine. doesn't and then it? We can kind because of, then you're like, then we can kind of pull on things yeah. later. So, and then we're going to do our third color or our third stitch in that color, and then we're going to trade again. See now at this point, you can kind of pull on those yarn tails to tighten them up a little bit to keep them from being so wonky. So oh it kind of needs it neatens it up, and you just have to kind of pull on them a little bit, especially for mm -hmm. the first few rows just to get everything settled and then it gets way easier after that. Okay, so here we are with our new stitch and again, we're gonna lay that right across the wrong side of our needle, which is facing us right now. Make sure you grab the correct strand of yarn. You don't want this <laughs> one, this is from this side. Right. This is from this side. So we're gonna pull that up and then we're gonna make a purl stitch right here and work our way across. All right, and we've made it to our seed stitch border, so we're going to knit, purl, knit that. This is so knit, cool. Knit, purl, knit. And we'll turn our work, and I'll work one more row, and then I'll skip to the part where I do the stranding. Okay. Okay. So here we are. We have some holes in our work. This is all normal, and it's going to be fine, I promise. I know it looks cuckoo bananas right now, <laughs> but it will look better later <laughs> once we kind of get all their little strands pulled in. See how we can tighten that up and make it look better? <coughs> you can just kind of adjust it as you go. All right, so here we have a knit, purl knit. And now we're at the knitting section of our color work chart. So we're going to knit across to one stitch before that new color so that, because we're changing color. And so now we're going to be putting the, the strand of yarn across, again, across the wrong side of our work. And then we're going to grab that new color from below because that's and the it's going to cross over. Yep. Yep. And then we're going to knit that and knit across to where we change color. I again. made Christmas stockings for our family. I don't know, like these really cool Nordic, lot of color work. And I really, w really wish I would have known this because there's like reindeer bodies and in the inside oh, where I carried yeah. the yarn. So I just ended up doing a lining because when you stuff the Christmas stocking, you know, stuff, it was getting caught on like you know, the little corner of the candy that yeah. I put in my daughter's stocking or something. <laughs> right. But I mean, an aligning solved the problem because yeah. it was just an easy way. But this is yeah, so and there's, cool. Yeah, there's so many different ways to do stuff, you yeah. know? There's lots of different techniques, and that's the cool thing about knitting Seriously. and crocheting and sewing. It's yeah. like, we will never know all and of this it. Is the cool we, there's thing always more to learn. As I'm yeah. like, wow. <laughs> exactly. Okay, that's so awesome. now, rem just remember, when you're switching <laughs> over, you don't want to confuse the two, two balls that are the same color. Keep one on one side of the pink and one on the other side. Mm -hmm. And you're going to bring that pink up here across the back of your needle, and then you're going to pull that up so it crosses over. And then you will knit across, kind of trapping that in place. Okay, so this is what it's starting to look good. Oh, so good. Kind of pull on things to get yeah. rid of that little hole there. And yes, that might be driving you nuts that these things are hanging out out front 
I'll show you that you, in just a second. I like you that it's just coming out the front because like you said, you can hold it and kind of pull it because sometimes in the back there's 37 strands yeah. happening. <laughs> there's like, just too cool. much back there and that's it a good really does right not there. matter where yeah. it's hanging out for right now. Like Seriously. later, you just poke it you back through the back and weave it in. Like, weave it yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Alrighty, so here we got a little further on our project. So this was the end, this was the last row of um, where I just worked in Tarja. And then at this point, this on our chart, we're gonna be working across row 11 here. So this is where we, we need mm -hmm. that extra color of the gold right here. And it seems so crazy to have three balls of gold just for like a couple little stitches yeah, in here. Like so that's, five stitches. that's where I just go, went ahead and I stranded it. Mm -hmm. You can do it either way. It doesn't matter if there's lots of ways to do it. You could also use a duplicate stitch. And I, I, um, I think I put a link in the download for that in case this is just managing all these yarns is too crazy. You yeah. could definitely do, do do a duplicate stitch instead where you're just stitching on top of Twyla what you actually just oh, said yeah. that. Okay. She said I would probably just use the chart to do a duplicate stitch. Yep, absolutely. Yep, yep. Ab yep, absolutely. You can totally do the duplicate stitch. And that would actually make the heart a little bit more three-dimensional and puffy. Uh -huh. So that's a variation of this to say, hey, I'm gonna do an intarsia one and then a duplicate stitch and that would give variation. Yep, mm -hmm. yep. I like it. Yep, that's a great option too. Okay, so here we are working those four stitches in this color. So we've got four, and that's about as many as I would wanna do um, because before switching to the next color because that's gonna make your float kind of long. Longer than that, it just starts to be yeah. too long. Um, so then you can just sort of drop yeah. the pink down there, bring this across, knit one stitch in that new color, then you can drop that yeah. color down and pick up the pink and then knit your way across to your next color change. And then you'll you'll pick up the, the sort of brownish color again, mustardy kind of brown color. The thing that I'm noticing on this back one that you have finished is that isn't that much slack even right here. Yeah, like that's it's not, not really a big deal. No, it's not it's, actually. You're it's right. okay. Yeah. It's a good solution because otherwise it's one more tail or one more Yeah, thing. and there's just too yeah. many. I just feel like something yeah. this little is mm -hmm. too fiddly to have too many different balls of yarn going. Agreed, like it, so I like it. So there, so you just can go ahead and <coughs> strand, you know, the next row as well. And then you're just gonna go ahead and drop that lighter color and then work your way through, finishing off with three rows of the seed stitch. And then you're gonna bind off in pattern, which we kind of already talked about when we talked about the ribbing. You're gonna bind off, you know, start out with making the knit stitches, uh, um, you know, it'll be knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl right. as you bind off. Instead of Just knit, in knit, the pearl, same pearl. thing, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Yep. I love right. it. So that is that one might be my favorite square. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> it's so cute. Well, it's so well, graphic. You're gonna to get have some in your heart. hat because we're exchanging. How awesome is also, that? Also, can we just notice that this is looking very lovely together? <laughs> very cute. <laughs> very cute. I just stole one of them and started putting it together. Going, what well, is this looking so cute? All right. So this next mm -hmm. square, this is just a garter stitch stripe square. And we're gonna be just working back and forth and turn rows and garter stitch is super simple. And this would be a square if you wanted to customize it for someone who's like really new to knitting. Oh, they can do it yeah. in a solid color or they can choose a color that, you know, a yarn that changes colors. Mm -hmm. um, you don't That's need to idea. do the stripes. The thing with the stripes is they're easy to do except you end up with a lot of yarn tails to weave in. And the way that I designed this was that at least you're switching off between one kind of main color and then another stripe of mm -hmm. another color so you have quite a few less yarn tails to weave in than if you changed it every, every single, two rows, yeah, yeah, which yeah. would be just crazy. Um, it's just something to keep in mind. You can definitely do wider stripes here. Maybe you could just do one stripe through the mm -hmm. middle, or you can stripe you know, two of one color, two of a second color, and only use those two colors, yep. and you can just kind of carry, carry it, up the, it up the side, and then yeah. you don't have to worry about all that yeah. stuff. Um, I was trying to kind of gather in a bunch of different colors into one square for a couple of the squares in the hat because mm -hmm. I thought it would be nice to tie things together a little bit. Um, but yeah, no big deal. If you don't want to do it that way, that's completely fine. Um, so I am going to, let's see, let me just grab The this. cool thing too is I'm seeing all the little pieces and I feel like I noted that with my fabric as well. It's, this is such a scrap buster. Like you don't yes. need yardage by any stretch of the imagination to right. make any of these squares work. The main thing is like the, the, the bulk of the, the square itself, but everything else is Yeah, it's really just scrappy. little tiny, little yeah. tiny bits here and there. And you, you know, you could use all different, you know, you don't even have to have, like in my hats, I had the same colors running through mm -hmm. all the squares, but you're Maybe gonna you exchange to. it anyway. You could just use a little here and there mm -hmm. and you, you know, doesn't really matter. Yeah, especially with whites and grays and more neutrals, just throw it in there and get rid of it. Yeah. That also frees up space and make to it buy more. <laughs> 
All right, so I've already done my cast on. Again, the German twisted cast on, I use that throughout this project just <coughs> to you know, kind of keep things simple. Um, but you can use a different cast on if you want to. And then I only cast on and then I stopped at that point. I did not knit, uh, knit a row yet, I just cast on. And then I'm gonna switch to this next color and I'm just knitting all the way across. And the way, I just wanted to show you a couple things. When you're, when you're adding a stripe, I like to hang on to mm -hmm. that beginning yarn tail, beginning and the, the end to keep it a little tighter as I put my needle through because otherwise if you're just trying to knit into it, it's like, ah, I can't. Yeah, and then it becomes so loosey-goosey. Yeah, so I just kind of yeah. wrap my fingers around that and then go ahead and knit it, you know, kind of maintaining a little bit of tension on that. So I'm gonna go ahead and knit back and forth here two rows, and then I will switch to the next color. If any, I just want to point out too, If I feel like if any of these stitches are feeling tricky, if we're new to any of this, there's a whole entire library of all the things yeah. on either the, the crochet corner or the knitting circle or on Craftsy that you can kind of... Yeah, and National Sewing and Circle National has some embroidery circle. stuff yes, on it too. Yes, exactly. Um, yeah, embroidery, that is another mm -hmm. thing that could be really cool. I did cool. link to, the, to an embroidery mm -hmm. video in the... In, in the, the download, pattern. so yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So in case yeah, you at the very end of this kind of very long pattern, there is quite a few links that are um, so you don't have to search. You know, go in the search boxes, but there's a, quite a few links to some of these more basic things. Or hey, I need a refresher. Or hey, I have this other idea. How do I make that work? Or hey, mm -hmm. this is another variation. So feel free to scroll all the way through all those pages to the very end. Mm -hmm. um, right. Yeah. Yeah, and we kind of touched on this before, but I also wanted to mention you can absolutely customize these squares like however you see fit as mm -hmm. long as they end up being a finished measurement of three and a half inches then you can you, you can make this a sampler hat you can be like oh i really want to learn how to do this other stitch pattern just make a small swatch of it right. sample and use it in your hat why not you know like this could yeah. be a swatch hat really um, okay, so I have worked two rows of that color and then i'm going <coughs> to go ahead and cut that because even if i'm going to use it again later the way that I, well, unless you're going to go back and forth just between these two colors, then leave it hanging and you can just keep carrying it up your work. Um, but I would just cut this off at this point if you're going to do this sort of random striping that I did where you just kind of um, use one main color and go back and forth between the main color and then adding all the other colors in there. So then we would go ahead and just bring up that yarn and let's see, and it doesn't really matter which way whether it's in the front or in the back, yeah, but I would be kind of I would be Is consistent every time. Oh sure, you don't as long really as you have pick to away. twist it. As long as you just kind of remember if it's front or back. Got it. Um, I'm bringing that to the back because I think it'll be a little easier later when I weave in my ends um, to have it already on to the have back it side. hook around that, okay. and then it'll kind of cover that up. But however you want to do it but just kind of the, my theory for lots of things in crocheting and knitting is if you if you're consistent with it it usually <laughs> looks better <laughs> okay this is this is a question I, ca I thought of with consistency because I, I have a lot of knitting friends and what if you have different sort of tightnesses of knitting because I have mm -hmm. one friend in particular that knits very tight and it's beautiful but it's way tighter than mine so I yeah. would have so would is that where you would maybe say all right hey adjust it and add more stitches because the, it doesn't maybe matter the number but it's more the size of the square in the end that's right the, best. the size, of, size of the square is <clears> more <throat> important but you can easily adjust the size of, of your squares in knitting and crocheting by using larger hooks or oh, larger sure, sure, needles sure. so you could i would yeah. definitely try that first okay but sometimes you might be using a yarn that you maybe you have it and it's the perfect color and it isn't really the right yeah. thickness then you can kind of tamper around with how many stitches so maybe Especially just gauge for something like well this i mean this really could, as long really? as you make it about the size it is yeah. your gauge right yeah so yeah. like if if you were working in the garter stitch back and forth you could easily add or subtract stitches yep. and yep. you can yep. just continue knitting until it is three and a half inches tall yep you, you, especially for this square um and then the single crochet square which I'll show you in a little bit you could just keep going until it's the right size it doesn't have to end up exactly the same amount sure. of rows as I say Got okay it. Um, okay so that's all you do you just go back and forth and back and forth and then you carry that main color up the side as you work and you just um, throw in some new colors and as long as you're switching every two rows that way you're gonna have your main color ready to go on the right side you know like yep. ready to go at the yep. front of your needles basically 
I love it. All right, so let's see. Okay, so I've talked about the two knitted squares that we have in the hat, and then Emily is gonna talk to us a little bit more about some sewing squares here. Yeah, so I talked a little bit about how this is such a scrap buster. I was telling Brenda before we started, I'm like, you know what, I didn't even have to cut into any of my big yardage. I was using all these random scraps. So if somebody ever tells you it's not worth saving scraps, this will bust that right there. Because all <laughs> I needed to do, like this particular little piece of fleece, I saved it because I knew, gosh darn it, I'm gonna need it someday and it's a really great color and I can't just get rid of it because it's enough. And sure enough, my little um, two, three and a quarter by three and a quarter square fits nicely in there to cut out. So the adjustment that's for the fabric piece of things is that your knitted and crocheted squares are gonna end up at three and a half by three and a half. When you're cutting your fabric pieces, you're gonna actually cut them three and a quarter by three and a quarter because we're adding a blanket stitch on the edge which makes them a little bit bigger. And mm -hmm. that blanket stitch is what's gonna allow the attachment and give like a nice little seam and the whole deal. So th three and a quarter by three and a quarter is all you need to do um, for your actual fabric background, I'm gonna say. And then I just kind of was started playing with the idea of doing some applique. I love applique because I feel like it can be detailed, it can be not detailed, it can be fun, it can be graphic, it can be nothing particular other than some squares. And I wanted to use the colors and play on the colors because I thought, okay, if we have this beautiful finished hat, a lot of the knitting and the crochet has a lot of detail in it because you see the, you know, the mm -hmm. yarn weaving. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to do something a little bit more graphic. So I have a handful of these right here and they're all similar-ish. This is just checkers where I use these extra little scrappy squares. I have love with a heart as Sounds the very oh, cute. obviously. <laughs> XOXO and then just a normal heart. So I'm gonna show you this um, kind of basic heart and then I'm gonna just give a little bit of variation. But like I said, all I did was cut a three and a quarter by three and a quarter background. This is a little bit stretchy. It's not super stretchy because it is, I think it's the 80-20 felt, yarn, wool felt, where it's 80% wool and 20% polyester. The one thing I would say is don't use 100% wool. 100% wool, it won't stretch. And your hat will be like kind of weird on your head. So try not to use 100% wool. I made one out of felt actually. This is wool, like 100% wool felt. This is like not stretchy at all, but I found it is okay for doing the details because this still has wiggle movement and stretch to it. Are you talking about 100% acrylic or 100% Oh, Th this is 100% wool. wool. Well, the wool yes. doesn't stretch. Oh, okay. Acrylic okay. yarn stretches oh. because it pulls apart, yes. kind of. Yes. So, you, I mean, maybe you probably could use that also, right? Acrylic felt. Acrylic felt. I feel felt. like that, I don't know. It's crunchy. I, I don't, don't know. love acrylic felt. I, I feel like, yeah. I feel like you just kind of have to pull on your yeah. felt yeah. and see how it feels. And yep. and if you, you know, like you if you pull really hard, this will move. Polar fleece or this knitted fabric. I, I mm -hmm. used this in this square and it wasn't really thick enough, so I just kind of doubled it up. Yeah. Here, you just want to pick something that is not going to fray, is kind of the yep. main thing. And an extra stretch is great, mm -hmm. especially if you were planning on doing the entire hat out a oh, oh my gosh, thing. Yes. Yeah. Then you're relying completely on your sewn squares mm -hmm. to do the stretching. Yep. So you got to make sure that it's going to stretch a little bit. Right. If you're throwing in some sewn squares in amongst knitting and crocheting, mm -hmm. you don't have to worry as much about it because the knitting and the crocheting is going to we'll stretch the plenty. Stretch but all of the knitted and crochet squares that I have here are quite stretchy. So mm -hmm. they'll kind of like... They'll absorb the stretch. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is a polar fleece that I think if you give it the wiggle, maybe I'm just going to call it the wiggle give test. It the, uh -huh. If you give it the wiggle test and you see that if I were to yank really hard, you could kind of manipulate the form of it, that means it's going to work. And all of these worked. I just tested 100% wool on top of 100% wool felt, and it felt really stiff. Like it felt like yeah. it wouldn't match. I don't know. Maybe you could do a whole 100% wool hat, like wool felt hat. I don't know. I just didn't love it. Yeah. I personally just didn't love it. But I think that work. would take some, a little bit of dabbling and a little bit of it would experimentation. Be, and and, and we the don't know shape for sure. of it would be more <laughs> rigid, I would say. Yeah. Like more like, I don't know. Have fun with it. <laughs> All that to say, <laughs> cut your background fabric three and a quarter by three and a quarter. And then I, what I would say is imagine in your brain that this is a tiny little canvas that you want to make something beautiful on and something that's very Valentine-esque. So it could be something as a little heart. And that is what I'm going to start with here. So mix and match your materials. This could be a puffy little um, fleece uh, heart, which is what I'm going to put on because I want to add more dimension so we have variety than just the two kind of layers. I really always, I think about um, contrast a lot when I'm making or when I'm even painting. And I like the contrast of how it would feel, how it would look 
or how it would um, maybe aesthetically look, like how it would look visually and then look up as a part of the whole. And this, I love this, but this is two of the same fabrics put together, which just means it's kind of a little flat. I like it. I want to play around with this kind of puffy on here. Now, it may be that it doesn't look that great, but I want to give it a try because I want that kind of contrast. So go back to your art days in elementary school and cut yourself a little heart. And if you want to cut a ton of three and a half by three or three and a quarter by three and a quarter squares and then cut your designs from there, please do that. I don't feel like I'm as precise um, with, I'm going to move some of this stuff out of the way because I feel like it's all right here. I'm not that precise because I just kind of want to cut and see. So know when you're kind of thinking about these squares that we have to do our blanket stitch around the edge. To me, this looks like it's far too close to the edge, so I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. But I already like how puffy it is. So just give it a little trimmy trim. And um, I'm going to say this too, because I'm not going to demo all of the, th the things I've done over here, because I just wanted to give you some inspiration. But if you're doing um, words or letters or something that needs to be a little more precise, haha, -ha, there we go. I like to cut things down and lay them out first to see if the spacing and the sizing works. So this is how I made my checkered and this is how I made my XOXO. So you can either go kind of willy-nilly like I just did and cut it out of a bigger piece or you can kind of work from the squares. However you feel like you work, have at it. I'm going to use... Um, I, because this is this is thicker, again, thinking kind of of my contrast, this is just my thought pattern, take it or leave it. For this, because both of these were the same weight, I decided to do something a little bit thicker to use the yarn. I'm going to actually use thread for this because I've already A, demoed how to use um, a blanket stitch on with yarn, and I'm going to demo here just how to do a blanket stitch with this thread really quick. This is just quilting thread. It's pretty tight, <laughs> pretty pretty it. thick. I know you can hear it. Um, everybody has their opinions on what brand they love. I like the brand that's on sale, typically, <laughs> because that's, that's just a good brand. I know the sale brand is what works really well for me. <laughs> um, I'm sure there's rhymes or reasons to always use cotton or I'll use always use polyester. I don't know what that would be. So, I like to use my pinchers a lot when I'm appliqueing. I don't know if that's a if that's an exact technique, but I like to use my pinchers, which means I pinch my fabric. If you would rather use pins and pin things in place, you can. I feel like I poke my fingers all the time when I'm using pins because mm -hmm. I'm moving around. I don't know about yeah. you. I just can't do it. I'm not much of a pinner unless oh. I really have to pin. Then, well, and the cool then, thing, I, then I do it. The cool thing about felt and wool is it's kind of like those old felt boards that you used to maybe have in school that we had, you know, like making up little stories and things where like, whoops, it sticks to one another. So it's not mm -hmm. like two slippy fabrics like Lycra or anything like that. Like they're not slippy. Mm -hmm. So I'm just anchoring my stitch on the back really quickly. When I anchor stitches, I like to make an X and then go back. So it goes this way, this way, and then go back the first way, just because I don't like having the big, like, bulky knot. So a blanket stitch on top of a blanket stitch that's not on the edging is the same as our other edging. Did I say, wait, a blanket, a, a blanket stitch that's on top of two things that are not on the edge where the edge is lining up is the same. I think. You'll be Did making your blanket right? stitch in the same way. Yes, that's what I'm trying to this say. This time? <laughs> the same. <laughs> so I'm going to demo a running stitch instead because I, I, there's a few pointers that I feel like have worked for me that I've worked out. So what I, again, I like to go from top to bottom. That's just a preference I have. When I'm doing a running stitch, the same thing is true from your blanket stitch where your tension and how, how wide everything is is what's going to make it consistent. I used to do... Um, blanket or running stitches where like your edge was all the way to the side. And the one tip that I'm going to have for you that, that kind of changed the way that I did a running stitch where I'm putting two things on top of each other is come up through both of your fabrics like this right here. And then when you, when you're going back down, angle your needle and go underneath this first fabric. I'm doing this in white because I want you to be able to see. But what that does is it's grabbing my heart and my underneath fabric and kind of like pulling it nice and tucked on the side. Now you may say, okay, but that kind of does the same thing as when you're um, 
bringing your yarn or your needle way over here. That's fine if you want that graphic element of a stitch. I like to, to angle my needle and go underneath because what I feel like that does is it, it, it gives the essence of a blanket stitch on top of, like it finishes the edge a little bit more, which is what I like about the blanket stitch, if that makes sense. So, and if you notice, I'm using white thread, but I'm losing my color. I'm not seeing, there's no contrast with that. And there's no kind of obviousness of this stitch, which I like, which is a difference, whoops, than this. So the same applique, same idea of applique, this one I'm using, I'm kind of highlighting the puffiness of this fabric, both with the fabric I'm choosing and the stitch I'm choosing. This shows the stitch and makes it look more patchwork. It's all kind of the idea, it's all the same idea, just a little bit different material and different kind of motivation behind it. So to applique this on, you'll just go all the way around the edge. And if you are involving little kids, in this, this could be a really fun, easy piece for them just to applique because yeah. it gets them working with needles in a safe way because mm -hmm. you're there to help. It gets them learning about tension and how hard to pull the yarn or the thread. And it gets right. them kind of working on consistency in stitches, consistency in um, how, how far apart they are, how close together they are. And I, my daughter is starting to, to hand sew a lot and it's so fun because it's easy to kind of like, oh no, Esther, get that a little bit closer together or whatever, but she's just so proud of it. It's so instant for mm -hmm. kids, which is really fun. Yeah. And even teenagers. I mean, this is an easy way to get them involved. Um, another thing I want to point out that I did, and if you have a Galentine's night that you're thinking of right now that you're like, heck, I have a lot of friends, but not every single one of them are crafty. I would say that's 100% okay because this is an easy stitch. So this could be a good challenge for them is just to do a quick applique stitch to do, right? See, really quick applique. The other thing I wanna point out is this square right here. Applique doesn't have to be sewn on. For this one right here, this XOXO, I thought, okay, I'm gonna do something a little bit more detailed it kind of would have been annoying to go around all this XOXO with an applique. I would have done it because I did it with this love right here. But if you're feeling like I just don't have friends that want to be doing this and getting them to cut out the squares is enough for them, yeah. still invite them, still invite yeah. them to come. Um, this isn't a super crafty option, but it is an option because you might think to yourself, I can just get out my hot glue gun and I'm going to say, no, please don't. I love hot glue just like the next person, especially for paper mm -hmm. and cardboard. For fabric, it's tricky because yeah. hot glue is essentially melted plastic and then it, it's gonna, A, it doesn't stretch, mm -hmm. but B, it's gonna be a gloppy, like clunky. It's gonna be hard. It's gonna be hard. It dries yeah. hard, like hard, hard. So these are the two glues. It's just like a fabric glue. There's probably a million other options out there that have stretch to them. A lot of fabric glues are one of two ways. This one is a little bit more um, uh, liquidy. So it like, it isn't as good on felt because I feel like mm -hmm. it soaks in. This one is like tacky, mm -hmm. which is amazing because it grabs and grips. And I use, I've used them in the past. One of them is a foam and felt glue. The other is just a regular fabric glue. Most fabric glues are permanent. There's also options for those like fabric tapes mm -hmm. um, that are like a, a, I don't know what, that, like, a, like a sticky tape that have stretch to them or even like a wonder under, which is an ironable. Mm -hmm. You just have to be careful that you don't have a polyester blend that yeah. would, you don't want to but, it, but, but all that to say, yeah. I don't want what we're doing to, to discourage some people. Yeah, we don't want to alienate feel. our yeah. friends who are a little bit afraid of yes. crafting. <laughs> and as much as I would love to just be the person that borges into your room and says, no, everybody can be crafty and encourage all of our friends that feel mm -hmm. like they're not crafty. I do understand limitations and feeling confident in what you're doing and having a good time and not being stressed. Yeah, <laughs> and maybe it's just not everybody's thing and that's, that's okay. totally okay. Let's still that's celebrate. totally okay. <laughs> yeah, let's still, so still hang out. So I, to just kind of get back on the applique train here, if you feel like, oh my gosh, yes, I love the crocheting, I love the knitting, I want to kind of design my own squares with my mm -hmm. own personality, I feel like applique is the way to go because I was able to take the idea of applique, whether it's with a chunky stitch or a simple stitch, and make it into this, the, like this more, this love one. I just did this quick kind of graphic checker thing. I did the XOXO. I mean, you could do tons of little hearts to make a uh -huh. little checkered heart pattern. I feel like you can, you could do an initial, like if it's, this is for, I don't know, or a, 
yeah. logo be really because cute. you all went on vacation together and you want to celebrate your amazing yeah. trip as friends or something, whatever it is. Applique is the way I feel like really super mm -hmm. duper to customize. Yeah, you can really express yourself. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And it's simple running stitches and blanket stitches to me that mm -hmm. work out great. Yeah. So I just was thinking more about the blanket stitch around the edging versus appliquing a piece on with a blanket stitch. And I just wanted to show one other option of doing the blanket Ooh, stitch. Yeah. So I've got my little piece prepped here. I just did one stitch right there at the center of my heart and I'm coming out right on that side because I'm going to be working around this way. And you can go either way with blanket stitch. Um, I'm going to go through here and then I'm going to pop my needle out just above where that fabric is. So it's not going through mm -hmm. here twice, it's just going through there once. And then I'm going to tuck it on top of that strand of yarn. Just make sure your needle comes out on top of that strand of yarn right there. So that's right your there. loop essentially that you're yep. putting it through. Yep. So just like that, you can make a blanket stitch and I'll do that just one more time here. We'll go through here and then we'll come out just barely above it and make sure you, you know, make sure you are on top of that strand. And then as you pull it, that will be your blanket stitch. And so that's, that's just creating a nice edging um, you know, if you want to cover up the, the very edge of that felt or whatever mm -hmm. fa your fabric is, um, then using the blanket stitch is really nice for that. On this hat, I just wanted to show you really quickly one little thing. I so love that. I had used, this is kind of a thinner knit. This was a purchase knit. I know it looks oh, like hand knitting, but it, it totally is, is does. not. I it thought is you knitted something and then no, put it on. Nope, it is a purchase fabric. Yeah. It's, it's much like this, this one, yeah. actually. I think it was in the same section. It looks like, you know, fake knitting yep. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> on, a, on an actual knit fabric. Um, but it was so thin that, it, and, and then like the edge of it was kind of coming up. I did not like mm -hmm. how that looks. So I do have a little note in the pattern explaining that um, if, you, if you're using a thin piece like this, like a thin, a thin knit, and you want to make that as your applique, you can do a little running stitch about, you know, a mm -hmm. quarter or an eighth inch away from the edge, and that helps you turn your yep. fabric around it. So if you did a little running stitch, you could turn your fabric, and that way you have a turned edge that you could blanket stitch down instead yeah. of that raw edge that was causing you problems. So that's just another option, another little troubleshooting thing. Um, there's a little note in the pattern about that too, so I just love in that. case. The cool thing is, is as I was kind of finding all this, these various fabrics for um, this project, it is cool how many fabrics are out there and how many reusable, because you're the one who had mentioned the, the, you know, the reusable felted sweater or oh, whatever. Uh -huh. There's a lot, of pa a lot of fabrics that don't fray. Yeah. The edges. And yeah. I've always been in the like camp of everything frays. Ah, that's why I like right. felt. And it's so much more beyond felt. Like yeah. all the knitted things. Knitted stuff. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. The knit fabric. Which includes polar fleece. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and you it's know, really just cool. other yeah. Lot lot there's there. lots of options. I out like there. it. Lots of options. Okay. Um, are you still talking about no, I think, I, yeah, I think I'm good. Wrap that up. Yeah, okay. All right, so let's talk about the crochet squares next. Um, we've got this is just a single crochet. This is a very I basic stitch, very, very basic. I wanted to put this in here because it's so simple. This would be a, like a really good beginner. Like mm -hmm. if you have a beginner in your group yep. of friends and you want to teach someone how to crochet, they can just make this little square, right? Perfect. And then, and then I'll teach you how to do, this is just called surface crochet, which is almost the same thing as a chain stitch embroidery. It's almost exactly the same. So I'm going to oh, show I you that. Oh, I thought it was a chain stitch. I mean, it is. I love that but though. But it's, you do it with a crochet hook. Yeah, instead but of like, what yeah. you're actually doing, how, where the yeah. yarn is going, it, it like, it is a chain stitch. Cool. You're just doing, it's just surface crochet. Yeah. So I'll show you guys how to do that too. So, all right, just to get started, if we've got some newer crocheters who want to learn how to do single crochet, I'm making quite the yarn tangle know, over here. Look fine. at this. This is great. This is how it goes. Okay, just cut the yarn, Brenda. Just cut the yarn. Just cut the yarn. <laughs> Just do it. If I was at home, I'd be untangling this. I actually secretly kind of enjoy untangling yarn. I know that oh makes boy. me weirdo. <laughs> You're amazing. All right, so to start, oh, I want to mention too, for this project, the one of the crocheted squares, as well as the, the band that we already talked about, the ribbed band, that is made with the, a G hook, which is a four millimeter hook. And because I wanted this, this square, mm -hmm. it, you know, the, it has different stitch anatomy. The yep. stitches are different, it's different size, and I wanted it to be nice and stretchy. So I made it with a larger hook. This is an I hook, which is a 5.5 millimeter hook. All right, so just to do regular single crochet, work back, for, back and forth and turn rows, we're going to create a little loop like this. And we're gonna flip that loop over onto the strand connected to the ball. 
I'm going to place our hook underneath that strand. And then I'm placing my finger here where everything crosses to tighten that up. And you want your loop to be loose enough that it can slide back and forth, but you don't want it to just fall off your hook. Mm -hmm. That's, that's kind of what I tell newer crocheters. All right, so we're going to start with a chain, which is how almost everything starts. So you'll wrap the yarn around the hook. You're going to go from back to front and down like that. And then you're going to use your hook to pull it through that loop. So if you're newer to crochet, it really helps to watch someone do this for a while and watch, I mean, people crochet differently. I'm, the way that I crochet is not necessarily the way that you're going to end up crocheting. Um, however you can hold the hook, however feels comfortable, whatever's good for your hands, whatever gets you the right stitches, mm -hmm. that's the right way to do it. <laughs> yep. So, um, but sometimes when you're starting, it's a little overwhelming and you, you're like, I, I wish I had three hands. I don't know how to hold this thing <laughs> on my hook hands. and move <laughs> it through there. Um, if you're feeling like you wish you had three hands, just pay attention to how, like when I'm switching my hands back and forth to hold different parts of the yarn. So right now I'm going to wrap that around the hook. Now I just switched from holding this chain in my hand as well as the hook, passed it over to that hand, and then I'm going to pull through. Switch it back, yarn over, switch it back, pull through. So this is one way to get started. You don't, I, you don't necessarily need to do this. I don't really do that. I just kind of do this usually, but there's lots of different ways to hold things. Um, you know, just try out some different things, watch some different videos mm -hmm. of different people crocheting. That can also help too. Okay, so let's see, we're chaining 12. Let me double check. I think it's 12, but I don't want to tell you the wrong thing. Let's see, single crochet heart square, okay. Oh, chain 13. I almost told you the wrong thing. We're going to end up with 12 stitches when we work back and forth and 14 rows. Okay. So let's see how many we have here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I'm going to remove one stitch there. Put that back on my hook. And now we're going to start working across the chain. So this is the top of the chain. It has all these little V's and they're all stacked up. We're going to roll that over. So we're looking at the bottom of the chain and there's all these little horizontal dashes here. We're going to skip the first one because that's just a turning chain. We're not going to work into it. A turning chain is just sort of, think of it as like a ladder to get you up to the next, to the next level. So we're going to skip that little stitch or that little um, horizontal dash. We're going to go underneath the second one here and we're going to yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. Okay, we're going to do that all the way across into each of these little horizontal bumps. Insert yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through two. Insert, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. You're giving this gap sweater a new life. Yes. It's this, great. It wanted to be a hat. It did. It told me that when I was, was at the thrift <laughs> store. It was like, I'm secretly a hat. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I saw it, and it had like a little hole in it and it also had a little tiny stain the oh. rest of it looked great and, and sure so i'm like rid of it because nobody of is gonna buy this no. it was let you me, know at the thrift store you. i'm like nobody's gonna buy this it's gonna get thrown out and yeah. i could reuse that yarn and it you know i got I a lot of yarn idea. for three dollars yeah right exactly that yeah think about that that's that's a <laughs> not lot that of i needed more yarn i well. certainly did not but it was the, the idea of the thing i didn't i don't know Yep. I like to keep things out of landfills and give it a new life. Amen. All right, so we made it to the very last dash across the back of our chains. And then we're going to make a chain one. So that means we just wrap the yarn around the hook, pull that through. Then we're going to turn this like we're turning a page in a book, just flipping it over so we can work across the back side. Okay, and then we're just going to insert our hook here. This is a turning chain, so we're not going to work into that. Sometimes, you know, just future note for the newer crocheters, sometimes we work into our turning chain, sometimes we do mm. not. Um, we don't usually do that at the beginning of a row, but sometimes um, at the end of the row when you get to the turning chain from the previous row, you'd work into it. But in this pattern, we are not ever working into it. So you just make the turning chain and then forget you did it and you forget about it. You ignore it. Okay, so we're going to work underneath that first stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Just a regular single crochet. All the, all the way across into each stitch across. So we're working underneath both of those loops, that V, to work all the way across. 
just like that. This is the most basic crochet stitch, really. Almost, almost everyone starts out. Oh, look, I, I, <laughs> I can just do started it. crocheting with another color. Oh, whoopsie! Snuck in there. Ah, this is why you should keep your place neat and tidy when you're working. <laughs> Although that could have been pretty. That I don't really know. Maybe <laughs> add a that extra new, color in there. It's a new it's a new square. <laughs> all right, so you get to the end, chain, turn your work, single crochet all the way across. So that is all you are doing. Okay, for 14 rows of single crochet. And let me show you what that'll look like. Oh, we're almost, I think I stopped a couple stitches away from the end here. Um that looks really like just pretty. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, it's so yeah. simple. And that's the thing is like, when I first started learning how to crochet, I learned the, the basic stitches and then I just wanted to move on to everything else. Yeah. And I sort of like just forgot about regular single crochet because yeah. I used all these other variations, which I still love. But now I'm like, you know what? I, I like the look like of that. This. And I do think the the success of this project is A, of course, the, the camaraderie of it, mm -hmm. but the variety is really cool. Yeah. Like that's the whole quilting bee idea, yeah, right? This like, is like from a long time ago. Yeah. Is the variety of not only the way people are making them, mm -hmm. but the stitches and the techniques yeah. and it's like it's just the, so cool. The um, finished beanie is greater than the sum of its parts oh, or whatever. Yes. <laughs> Okay. You'll point that on a pillow. <laughs> right, exactly. Okay, so this is how you can count your stitches. So I, I see these little grooves here, and that go that is every other every other row. Okay, oh, I, may, sure. I mean counting your rows. So in case you don't know how to count rows, this would be two rows, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, and fourteen. We're working on the fourteenth row, but really the rows don't matter as much as just the size of it so you just can keep crocheting until it measures three and a half inches tall and three and a half inches wide all right so there is the end and we are going to just go ahead and cut our yarn and then we just draw that through that very last loop to finish it off and then we have our square all right and so the next thing we're going to do is make that surface crochet and i you can choose whether you want to use um, for this i use a double strand because i wanted it to just be a little bit more bold and i was using a thinner yarn here mm -hmm. um, but you can certainly just use one strand it does it does not matter let's see i'm going to pick a dark color so you guys can see a little better it'll contrast a little better i think well this will probably contrast okay maybe you can see the color better or see the new color better all right, so um, you can go ahead and just eyeball this if you're a good eyeballer with hearts, or you can get a wash away or fade away marker mm -hmm. and draw it on there. So I'm going to do that because I think it's just a little easier, especially if you're first starting out. Um, I kind of like to make my hearts a little lopsided and look a little more like hand drawn, mm -hmm. you know, not so perfect for this one. I thought that was fun, um, but you can certainly make them right side up. We can try that here. So this marker is going to fade away later. We don't have to worry about it. I love those markers. I've set of those at my house. But this will give me a little map of where to sew. I hope you guys can see that. It's kind of the bumpy texture makes it a little <laughs> tricky, but you could I've I, also I done can see chalk it <laughs> too. If you don't have those markers, chalk works really yes, well. Yes, and, and chalk, especially if you have like a darker color, mm -hmm. that'll show up really well. Or if sometimes you can get chalk in like a yellow or mm -hmm. you know some other kind of color. Just don't use like brown that. brown stains. Oh, brown chalk. Never I didn't know that. <laughs> you I've live and learn. <laughs> you live and learn sometimes. Now we know. Yep. Um, okay, so you're going to put your, your um, contrasting color behind your work. So if this is the front side, which by the way, it doesn't matter which, whichever side looks better to you is the front. And then you're just going to insert your hook. Um, I start at the bottom of the point of the heart, but you can start anywhere really. And then you're just going to grab that yarn with your hook and you're going to pull it up to the top surface. Now you're just going to be inserting your hook every so often. You don't have a specific yeah. stitch to go into. You just move it. That'll that'll dictate how long your stitch is, where you put your hook. I mean, if I, I put it way up here, this and long I understand stitch. Understand this now. Yeah, you can this see where we're. This is so you can, cool. You can see where we're going. This is this is like um, uh, double stitch to stitching on top of knitting too. Similar idea. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. You can do this. Yeah. You can definitely do this. Um, on knitting or crocheting so if you just wanted to make a plain knit square yes. you could do the same thing um, with the crochet hook just pop it through okay so we've got that yarn back there we're gonna pull that up and we're gonna pull it through the loop on our hook and that first loop is a little loose because it's not actually attached to anything don't worry about it I'm just gonna pull on it make it a little smaller don't let it stress you out <laughs> <laughs> all right so we're gonna insert our hook again I'm just kind of moving every 
I don't know, maybe a little bit bigger than a quarter of an inch away. And I'm just going through, grabbing that yarn with my hook and pulling it up. So I've got my hand back here and I can ha put a little tension on there. And I, you know, after you do this for a while, you can loop it over your hook without even being able to see it. Yeah. Because you, you feel that tension and you can feel it on your hook. Um, but when you're first starting, you know, definitely just, you know, turn your work yeah, upside sure down you so you it. can see yeah. it as you're, as you are pulling it through. So this is a great way to add, you know, fun little details to stuff. You could put an initial, you know, you could do a so star cute. would be cute to match yeah. Emily's sweater. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't wear a heart sweater, guys. I wore a star sweater. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe next time. <laughs> okay, so we, we got around it. to that little <laughs> point in our heart. And I like to kind of pull on this just a little tighter here to tighten that last stitch because it seems like it helps me get the point of the heart Mm, nice and sure, pointy sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and then I'm gonna go back up here see it's working out that is such a cool way to so do that. and another thing I had thought of um, was it would be fun to do this in a bunch of colors like a heart a color inside yeah. of another color would be cute or you can make a rainbow with it I mean that would be fun mm -hmm. too it's just and this is just if you're a crocheter already um, this would be definitely be faster than doing an embroidery chain sure. stitch, I think. Yeah. Yep. Um, unless you're very fluent in embroidery chain stitches, then maybe well, that could be faster. But it yeah. feels like less. I don't know. Yeah. For me, it feels a little bit less. Well, because you're 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 going from like front to back and flipping less. Because with chain stitches, I mean, I guess you're not really. I guess. I mean, it, I don't I mean know. it just. Yeah. Yeah, it depends on how fluid. <laughs> Maybe you are, I shouldn't I have said that. Maybe that's not true no, for everybody. But I, for I, me, be even for though me. I've yeah. been I've been sewing since I was like four, and but doing a chain stitch, doing chain stitch embroidery, it's not hard. No, no, and no, it's no, fun. Um, but for me, this is just a little quicker, and I don't yeah. know. Look at how fast that was. All right. So when you get to the end, you might be like, "What are we doing? How do we f how do we stop? How do we stop sewing? <laughs> I mean, never, how do we stop making this stop. chain stitch? All right. So we're gonna cut. <laughs> We're going to cut our last strand and just completely pull it through like that. Mm -hmm. And then we'll just put that on a, a needle, a yarn needle. Oh, yeah, and poke it through the back. And then we'll, yeah. we'll go underneath. There's a little way that you can. So if mm -hmm. you take a look at how these stitches look, your stitch comes out of the previous stitch, loops around underneath the stitch in front of it, and comes back down. If you just kind of look at the anatomy of that stitch, you're going to repeat that here. You can go underneath those two loops like that and then back down into this place right here yeah and voila and then you've just complete well, theory, and then it looks like a chain it, stitch it, right there yes <laughs> and it yeah. looks like it didn't even end right so it just keeps going and then you can go ahead and weave in your ends and let me just talk about weaving in ends just really quickly because um, there might be some newer people newer to crocheting and knitting um, when you're weaving in your ends, you want to go in a couple of different directions because that really helps your yarn stay in place. And don't be afraid of splitting through your yarns. I think most of us are taught like you kind of go through picking up some little mm -hmm. loops here and there and that's totally fine. You can do it that way. If it's something you're washing a lot, it's actually a good thing if your needle splits through the plies of your yarn. Um, in most cases, it's a good thing um, because it gets a, a little extra drag on your on your yarn it's a little extra friction and it won't pull oh, out quite sure. as easily so um, then you can go ahead and weave in all your ends including these ends as well so that is that crocheted square and then we'll move on to the granny square which is our last square to talk well actually i forgot to do the lazy daisy which we'll jump back into oh, i think i'll do yeah. the i think i'll do the granny square next and then we'll come back to the lazy daisy sorry about that guys i meant to do that okay so here we are working on some classic granny squares here. Because this is a hat and I, you know, we live in Minnesota, so it's just felt like I should make this warm enough for me to wear. <laughs> um, I make, I usually make my granny squares without chains between these groups. And if you are a granny square maker, you might know what I'm already, you, you might already know what I'm talking about, where you make three double crochets and then a lot of times you'll chain one there and then do another three double crochets. I make it without my chains. There's lots, oh. of different, lots and lots of different ways to make granny squares, um, but that's the way that I normally do it. And I think the reason that I do that is because I'm looking for a more solid stitch pattern mm -hmm. usually. 
Okay, so I'm going to start out with by chaining four, and I'm going to make a little circle to crochet into. One, two, three, and four. You may have noticed I switched back to my smaller hook. This is a four millimeter hook here. Then I'm going to slip stitch into the very first chain that I made to make that into a little circle. Then I'm going to chain three. One, two, and three. And now, um, if you're newer to this, you don't need to worry about this part, but if you've been crocheting for a while, you may want to try crocheting over, like on top of this strand of yarn, and I'll show you why a little bit later. All right, we're going to make a two double crochets, so we're going to yarn over, insert into the middle of that circle, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And I'm going to do that again. Yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull up, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now we've gotten to a corner, so we're going to chain two, one and two, and now we're going to do three double crochets. So I forgot to mention this beginning chain here. This actually counts as a double crochet right here. So now we're going to do three double crochets. One, two, three, and then a chain two, one and two, and then three more double crochets. One, two, and three, and then two more chains, one and, whoops, I kind of split my yarn there. One and two, and then three more double crochets here. One, two, <laughs> I lost my, lost my yarn, and three. All right, and now we are going to do two chains and join right here. Alternatively, you could also just do a half double crochet into the top of that chain that also closes it off. But just for simplicity's sake, we're going to do two chains, one and two, and then we're going to do a slip stitch join into the top of those three beginning chains that we made. So that would be like the top of that pretend double crochet that we made right at the beginning. So we'll do a slip stitch there, and then we'll cut our yarn. I love granny squares because it's lots of colors in one oh, little yeah. square. And I it's just, just it. like the, the perfect project for yep. using up scraps and combining Seriously. colors and all that yeah. sort of stuff. Which, so cool. Yeah. So I, I just ended up pulling on this beginning yarn tail because I crocheted over it. And what that did was it made that circle a little bit tighter. Um, you could also start with an adjustable loop in the middle, but I really like starting with that chain because it's a little bit sturdier. And if you don't, if you can't crochet over that strand or you don't like crocheting over that strand, that's fine. You can just use a needle to weave that through all of those, um, the beginnings of those double crochets, um, and then go ahead and weave that back and forth. Do you do that right away tight. usually, just so that it's done? The, like if, this if, part, if you the weaving it in? Yeah, if you don't crochet over top of it? Um, sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I'm just lazy and I wait until it. And then you're usually like, by it, the end of the that. square, though, I weave in everything because oh, if I it. move on to the next square and I have a bunch of things with ends, then, then it you have drives 30 me nuts. squares to weave in, and that feels it's just too much. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so to start the next color, we are going to start with that sl same slip knot, which is just um, we made the loop, flip the loop over onto the strand connected to the ball, and then we're going to put our hook underneath it, but I just like to pull it up. This is my quicker way of doing it, but you can do it the original way that I showed you if you're newer to it. Um, and then we're going to go in here into one, any one of these corner spaces, those chain two spaces, and you're just going to yarn over and pull through that loop on your hook just to anchor the yarn. Now we're going to do two chains, one and two, and this is going to count as the first double crochet of our round. Okay, so we're going to do two more double crochets into that same chain space. So there's one and two. And by the way, there is a link in the, in the pattern for um, a video of me showing you how to make this same kind of granny square with color changes and everything, in case you need a little more detailed explanation. All right, so we're going to skip over these three double crochets, and we're going to put three double crochets in the next chain two space. So one, two, and three. And then we chain two, one and two. And then we're going to uh, make three more double crochets into that same chain two space. One, two, three. 
Now we're going to skip over this, these three double crochets, and then we're going to do three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets over here. So here's three double crochets, one, two, three. You are so fast. And <laughs> chain two. I know I'm going a little quickly No, 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 here. no, no, no. I'm, I'm saying no. it's just awesome to watch. <laughs> Um, and then three more double crochets. Normally, I don't like to do my demos quite this fast, no, but great. we're just putting so much well, stuff into this. Well, use a detailed video if people really are feeling yeah. like they want to hone in on this. There's a detailed video. And these are the same stitches I already demonstrated down yeah. here. Yeah. Okay, so now here's another corner. So every time you get to a corner, you're going to do that combination of three double crochets, then a chain two, and then three double crochets into that corner. So one, two, three, chain two, one and two, and then we're going to do three more double crochets, one, two, and three, and now we have almost completed our second round. We're going to finish up this corner. We only put three double crochets in it, so we're going to add three more right here, one, two, and three, and then we're going to chain two, one, and two, and then we are going to slip stitch into the top of that beginning chain two that we made. That was taking the place of a, the first double crochet of our round. Okay, and then we're going to cut our yarn, which is good because there was kind of a little <laughs> bad spot in my yarn right there. All right, so we finished round two. So round three is very similar to round two. We're gonna, again, start with that slip knot on our hook. And we are going to go ahead and make a slip stitch. So we just insert our hook into any corner space, grab that yarn, pull through, pull through the loop on our hook, and now we're gonna chain two, one, two, and this is gonna count as the first double crochet of the round. So we're gonna do two more double crochets into the same chain space, one and two. Then we're gonna skip across these three double crochets. And you can see right here, this is not a corner, so we're not gonna do two sets of those three double crochets. We're just gonna do one set of three double crochets. Okay, no chaining between. We're just hopping right over there. And we're gonna do three double crochets right here. One, two, three. Then we're going to hop to the next chain space, and this is a corner space, so we're going to do three double crochets, one, two, three, and then a chain two, that's the very corner, and then three more double crochets, one, two, three. Okay, so this is not a corner, so we just put three double crochets right there between those two groups of three double crochets. One, two, three. Skip to that corner. Three double crochets. One, two, three. Chain two. One and two. And three more double crochets. One, two, three. Just keep making your square bigger. Yep, so, so you're just cool. going to continue your way around. When you get to the corners, you do you know, those two groups of the three double crochets and then a chain two in between them. If you get to a space between those th three double crochets here, three double crochets there, you just put three double crochets, okay? Um, and there's no chaining except for at the corners. So just remember that. And in this particular granny square, there's lots and lots of different ways to make granny squares. So after you get, after you've worked through round three, then you are going to do one round of single crochet, and that just gives it a nice little border and it makes it the right size, because this is just a little tiny bit too small, but if we add one more round of the, of the granny squares, then it seemed like it was a little too big. So let's see, we will add on, maybe we'll do this color, this will be pretty. <laughs> so this color is a thinner weight yarn. Um, I told you earlier I was doing a little bit of cheating with my yarn and starting to use some yarns that were not a four, which is what I recommend in the pattern to use a, a worsted weight yarn for everything. But you can get away with using a slightly thicker yarn, which is 
if it's a very lofty yarn, if you go down some hook sizes. So this yarn that I'm using here, it's actually what I made my sweater out of. Oh. Um, it's very, very fluffy and lofty, and you can really, when you crochet it tightly, it doesn't get too stiff because it's so lofty. Um, and this yarn, this is thinner, but I'm gonna be using it um, double-stranded. So in that way, you can kind of maximize your, you know, use your yarn stash, what, use what you got. All right, so we're gonna start with a slip knot on our hook, and in any, chain um, and any cha chain two corner space you can just go right on in there and you can make a slip stitch join like this there's there's uh, numerous different ways to start this you can do a slip stitch join and then a chain one and begin your single crochets or you can do a standing single crochet which is another option so you've got your slip stitch on your hook and you can just go right in here and just make a single crochet so you yarn over pull up your loop yarn over and pull through two, and that just starts out your single crochet there. So that seems like a little bit less bulky, but it, it does take a little bit of um, getting used to, to not have your yarn anchored first. So we're gonna add one more single crochet into that chain two space. And now we're gonna make a single crochet into each of the stitches around. Well, each of the stitches to the next chain, uh, chain two space, space, I should say. So the top of each stitch, and don't forget, to work into that chain, that beginning chain, which counts as a double crochet, that needs a stitch as well, okay? So we're gonna continue just working our way over to the next corner, making those single crochets, one in each stitch across. Um, if anybody has any lingering questions, please get them into the chat because we're gonna be wrapping up pretty soon here. The one thing I was thinking about too that I know we mentioned um, as we were starting, if you're feeling like, hey, I wanna do this project, but I'm not really maybe a hat person or maybe you never wear them, like you 100% could use the same idea. You could make these into like a four square pot holder. You could make them into a zipper mm -hmm. pouch. You could make them into a little coin purse. You mm -hmm. could make them into a table runner. Yeah, I mean, that would be kind of a lot. Or a bag would be super Or coasters, cute, or, or a bag, or a towel, or yeah. a scarf. I mean, think of them as like building blocks, you know? Mm -hmm. Like Legos can make all kinds of cool structures, and these are kind of like <laughs> We that. are just, just like these Lego little builders. <laughs> <laughs> little squares you can add together in many, many different kinds of configure. I mean, you can make a sweater out of it. The How other, cool would that be? The other, um, I think my last live I was wearing a granny square sweater that was just made with a bunch mm -hmm. of squares mostly. Okay, so I've gotten to my next corner and I'm gonna put four single crochets into that corner. So one, two, three, and four. And then I'm gonna continue making sure you don't miss that first stitch right after that. You're just gonna be placing a single crochet into each stitch around. Yeah, that's the cool thing about making things in a modular way is mm -hmm. you really, you can, you, you know, you could make all kinds of <coughs> awesome things. Well, and that's where the, the fun of, you know, celebrating community and togetherness with the Galentine's idea mm -hmm. for women. You're like, hey, I made this cool coin purse with my friends. or It doesn't even have to be a hat. Yeah. I mean, hats are very right. obvious for us because we wear them all the time <laughs> for six months out of the year yeah. being in the North area. <laughs> <laughs> we do wear them a lot here. Yes, but you can definitely, you know, cha change up the squares. Maybe you live somewhere that's warm and you're like, I like the idea of a hat, but that looks really hot. Um, you know, you can make some lacy squares. Mm. As long as they're the right size, you can put, still put it together. Yep. You know, you can really change. I hope that people use this project as like more of a jumping off point yeah. and more of like a little inspiration. Um, you know, to get yeah. together with your friends and make cool stuff, or even just, you know, make cool stuff yourself. If mm -hmm. you're not getting together with your friends, that's <laughs> totally fine too. I mean, I, you know, I, yeah, we'll be your Galentine's. It's all good. I'm in. <laughs> all right, so I have made it almost all the way around. I've got just a couple more stitches here, and then I will show you how we end off. We made it to the very last double crochet. And now I have to do two single crochets into this last chain two space because that, we had already placed two there, but we're supposed to have four in each corner. Okay, so we just had to finish that up. Then we'll cut our yarn and pull that right through your stitch. And then we can go ahead and fasten this off to, or you could have done a slip stitch, sorry. You could have done a slip stitch to the next stitch the very first stitch of the round if you wanted to, or you can pull it through like I just did there, and then before you weave in your ends, 
you're going to tuck that underneath that first chain. That was the very, sorry, not chain, first single crochet that we made, mm -hmm. like that. And then we're going to go back down from the place it came out of, and that makes that a very nice like seamless, stitch. seamless little join there. Invisible join, I guess it's called. And then you can go ahead and weave in your ends on the back of your work. Okay, I got lots of ends to weave in here for the, these granny squares. All right, so the last thing I wanted to show you guys was this Lazy Daisy stitch. In case you're newer to Lazy Daisy stitch uh, embroidery, let's see. I think I lost my bigger needle, so I'm going to try. I have, one, I have one of your bigger needles. Oh, okay. Actually, I got oh, this one okay. here, so this will be good. Oh, I used it on a different thing. That's where it went. All righty, so... To do the lazy daisy stitch, you can see that I have uh, three stitches or three flowers already mostly constructed. I just have to make a French knot in the middle. So I end it off here and I'm going to kind of weave my way through because this fabric is doubled. I actually doubled this fabric. If you are working with a polar fleece mm -hmm. and it's thicker and it's only one layer, you may have to kind of fasten off here or you can kind of connect your way over there if you don't mind having a couple of like a little bit of longer strands, you can kind of find your way over there, which is fine. Then you don't have so many ends to tie off and weave in and that sort of thing. So we're going to come out right here and I'm going to make a five petal lazy daisy, or, but you can make as many petals as you want to. It, it really doesn't, it doesn't matter. All right, so this, where I came out of, that's going to be really close to the center of my flower. And if it helps you, you can go ahead and make a little dot right in the middle where you're imagining Wow, the there's center. some serious lint on there. <laughs> what, <laughs> what I marked last. You did oh, I know. <laughs> the pillows. Oh, that's what I, I think I used it on that. <laughs> the fuzzy okay, pillows. that makes sense. Okay, so, um, <laughs> all right, so that's going to be the center of my flower. So I'm going to be stitching really close to it. I'm going to put a stitch just a little ways away, and I'm going to pop up right here. And that is going to catch this mm, strand. Yep. This is kind of like doing a chain stitch, except you're just kind of letting it be a little bit loose. Yeah, you don't want to pull too hard. Yeah, don't pull too hard because that'll distort your work and it'll make it kind of like long, skinny, not very petally shaped. <laughs> so I'm going to make a tiny stitch there just to anchor that loop. And then I'm going to come out right next yeah. to where my petal was before. So I'll do that. So that's going to anchor my little petal there. And I'm going to make my next petal right over here. So I'm going to go in pretty close to where I came out. And then however long you want your petal to be, you're going to be taking a stitch. And that's what's going to anchor your petal, the tip of your petal. Like that. There we go. And we're going to come out right here. Twyla has one last quick question. Oh, okay. Kind of demonstrating. Yeah, that. great. Will you go back and finish all of your squares, or will you frog them? Oh, is she wondering about this giant pile on the table? Maybe. <laughs> I don't know what frog uh, them means. Frog, frogging is like, so think when you rip something out, you yeah. rip it, you rip it, rip it, rip it, yeah. rib it. Oh, oh. Frog. That's like yeah. That's like knitter crochet or lingo for ripping it out. Um, I am going to be finishing these squares because Emily and I... This is a great segue. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for asking that, Twyla. <laughs> um, Emily and I are going to be hosting a Galentine's Day party in two weeks. Yep, I can't the 13th. The, the it's 13th, yep, on actual, on actual Galentine's Day. Mm -hmm. um, and so in that live event, we are going to be putting our hats together so you guys mm -hmm. can see them totally finished, what they look like. Um, and then we're also going to be doing some other fun things too. We're going to be kind of celebrating with you guys. Yeah, because so. the idea here is that today we're hoping to give you this inspiration. So if you want to do something, you can pull your friends together and pull your, you know, text them, call them, email them, get Zoom, whatever, however you want to do this and maybe plan out your color palette, maybe start to get ideas going, or maybe mm -hmm. you're like, heck, I'm gonna buy everything and have a party on the 13th. I'm not really sure, but hopefully today is an inspiration for having the Galentine's party. And if you notice, actually, if you scroll all the way to the very bottom of this really long PDF that we have that has all the very detailed instructions on our applique, on our granny squares, on our crochet, on our knitting, on our ribbed um, bands, all of those things, all of those, all that pattern step by step is in that PDF, but at the very bottom of it is a lot of other things that we have taught before mm -hmm. or that we have done before that is in 
um, either on Craftsy, National Sewing Circle, National Knitting Circle, Crochet mm -hmm. Corner. So if you're like, hey, I really want to do this, but I also want to have friendship bracelets available, or mm -hmm. I want to have make some pillows, lip pillows or zipper pouches or something as a little kind of takeaway for mm -hmm. your friends. There's a lot of other ideas in there to just get the inspiration going for whatever Galentine party that you plan or kind of are dreaming up or whatever you feel like you want to do. Yeah, so yeah, so you can check that out and see like maybe you just want to keep it simple and you just want to send someone a Galentine's Day gift or something like that. And you, you know, that you might even just use that for inspiration. Mm -hmm. You yeah. don't have to be making this beanie to appreciate what's at the <laughs> end of the of the PDF. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there's lot there's lots of stuff in there. All right, so I have gone all the way around, made all my little petals there, and now I'm just going to make a French knot. Oh, for the middle. Just for the middle, and How that's cute it. Is that? And so you can go ahead and knot this on the back, or you can do the Emily method <laughs> where you're making a, a X. little X, um, or just stitching in a couple of directions like this. That's even enough yeah. uh, to hold it there. And if you are worried about your knot going through to the front, you can always, like, anchor it in a larger stitch and then you can undo that mm -hmm. stitch After. later yep. and tie it I've to the end before. at the end of your French knot mm -hmm. too. So, okay, I'm going to be tail or something. Mm -hmm. Yep. I'm going to be pushing this up so that I can stitch in from the front here. French knots are so fun, the loopy loopy. I know it is fun. It makes such a nice little cute little knot. All right, so we're just taking a really tiny stitch here. Just a very small stitch. And then we're going to wrap our yarn around a couple of times. I'm going to do four times just because. Because that sounds good. Um, <laughs> if you wrap it more, it becomes a larger knot, but it also sometimes gets a little unwieldy and yeah. sometimes does surprising things. Unwieldy, so that's a good <laughs> term. So here we have them. I've kind of bunched them all up right next to the fabric, and I'm going to like gently put my fingers on that. I'm still allowing my needle to slip through, but I'm holding on to those to keep them down there in that place yeah. until I get that pulled through. Look at that little. And then we may, and then we're just gonna take stitch right back down. Yeah. Next to where we came from. Just like nice that. Center. And then we have an adorable little flower center. So I would do that for all the rest of these little lazy daisies. I just wanted to make sure that you um, saw this little embroidery. I'm sorry I didn't do it in the oh, embroidery section. Yeah, I forgot, fine. but it is in this lazy daisy stitch is featured in the, the picture of the, the pattern there. So all right. So I think that's it, unless we have any remaining questions. We don't have any other questions. questions. A lot of people are very inspired, which I really Yay. am excited about. So, I mean, I think all in all, we can agree that I hope that this this is, like you said, a jumping off point for however you want to spend your Valentine's Day or even just yeah. get started thinking about gifts or something. Yeah, I and don't there know. are ideas in the end, like you, Emily said, for mm -hmm. throwing a Valentine's Day party. There's like spa ideas. Mm -hmm. There's a movie night ideas. There's crafty night, mm -hmm. of course, ideas. Obviously. And then... In case some of you guys are like, what is this Galentine's Day? This is a little late to be talking about this after we had just had this live to our event. Uh, uh, but if you've never heard of Galentine's Day before until you saw this, it's like, yeah, getting together with your girlfriends. And it started out because there was a character in a show called Parks and Rec, which I love that show. Mm -hmm. There's a character called Leslie Nope, and she just was had a Galentine's Day celebration, celebration every year. Yeah, yeah. For, her, for her friends. For and gal so, pals. Um, mm -hmm. I actually put a link to that to a Did video you on episode? YouTube so you can see a yep. little snippet of yep. that little section. What I mean, this is she all goes by, so. above and beyond with little poems. And individual she's so crafty. <laughs> she's so crafty. <laughs> she's like a like she, she makes these elaborate crafted presents for everybody. Yeah, so really I just funny. absolutely embrace that whole yeah. idea of celebrating yeah. with your friends and making stuff for everybody. So. And awesome. making things with everybody. So mark on your calendars to, for the 13th because yes, this, we will to be finish here. this all together would be really Emily cool. Emily and I will be here mm -hmm. again. We would love it if you guys would join us. Bring your friends. It'll be awesome. Have your guests. Simulcast us onto your TV. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe don't do that. <laughs> all right. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks for joining us today. Happy almost Galentine's. Thanks I hope this so has been much, inspirational. Everybody. Bye. See ya.